LO11 Sports on Continental Cablevision presents a Michigan High School Athletic Association playoff game that John Glenn Rockets against the Catholic Central Shamrocks. John Glenn received the opening toss. Catholic Central deferred to the second half, and the kickoff was taken by 32 Dave Jarrett. And the John Glenn Rockets will start first and 10 at their 25. Hello again, everyone. I'm Mike Krupp along with Rob Gorsica. Thank you very much for joining us as we present to you the first playoff game for John Glenn since 1994. We're here at Irma Kianka Field. John Glenn against Catholic Central. Rob, Catholic Central comes in at 7-2. John Glenn 9-0, but you can throw out the records when it's the playoffs. Yeah, certainly can. Either team has seen each other just on film and scouting, and it, this is it. This is what you play all year for. Justin Barrett leads the Rockets first and 10. Paul Morandi in motion. Dave Jarrett split to the near side. Toss to Reggie Spearman, number 15 in the backfield. Gets to the outside. He's going to be wrapped up. Leading the charge, number 40, Nick Mastriani for Catholic Central. Yeah, you can see where uh, Spearman tried to bounce that ball to the outside. And, uh, you, know, you know, these first couple, five, ten plays, you're going to sort of feel out the defense, see what type of speed they have and, uh, you know, what plays are going to work for you. And, you know, we've seen... Uh, uh, Glenn many times and we know what type of game plan and I don't see any reason that they're going to uh, uh, divert from that. It's a nice between the tackle type uh, offense, nice and conservative. They got Spearman back there so it should be pretty interesting these first couple plays. They're very important too. Second and 10 for John Glenn from the 25. Barrett play action. Looks to the far side. Morandi can't come up with the catch, number 10. It was thrown just outside of him. They look like they're playing a little soft defense. So you can see the uh, number 17 for uh, CC out there, the defender. He's looking over at the, uh, that's Greg Carr. You're going to hear his name a lot. He's looking over at the coach, and, you know, you know that's one thing that you want to not do early in the game, and that's make a mistake. So they're probably making sure a nice little soft defense. Uh, the ball should have been caught. He definitely had his hands on it. Might be a little cold. You know, let him get warm. John Glenn is a tough offensive line anchored. They average 229 pounds on the offensive line. Bring up third down and 10. Three receivers to the far side. Barrett, short drop, looks for Chet Reese. Excuse me, that's Lou Hartwig on the catch. But he's not going to go anywhere as the Shamrocks wrap him up well short of the first down. Yeah, they did. Uh, it's going to be three and out for uh, Glenn. And, you know, that's just the one thing you got to really, you know, hope that doesn't happen is like three and out you'd like to get at least a third down and get some yards but you know as long as there's no turnovers I think they're all right well, I John, John Glenn's not used to going three and out for the majority <laughs> no. of the season they've had their way with their opponents but Catholic Central a tough formidable opposition yeah but you know you, you just get these kids mentally into it to say that you know you're not going to win it on one player you're not going to win it on one series it's you know it's a 48 minute game and it, that's what it's going to take is 48 minutes so I think these guys know what's going on. Chet Rees on the punt for John Glenn. It's a wobbly kick. Just gets across midfield. Takes a bounce. It's going to go out at about the 43-yard line. So no return for Catholic Central. The Shamrocks will take over with a short field. First and 10. They're led by quarterback Greg Call. Mostly Catholic Central has run this year instead of pass. Coach Tom Mack says, hey, I'm going to use whatever I can. I'm going to use the players to my advantage. And so far, Catholic Central, they won seven out of nine games this year. They made the playoffs again. And uh, basically... If you can shut down the running game, Catholic Central may be put in, in some much of a quandary. Yeah, you look at the offense, they got a three-back backfield. Yeah, these are fun to watch. A lot of, lot, there's going to be a lot going on. And, and what happens is the defensive coaches for John Glenn are all week have been instilling into these defensive guys that you really got to be able to stay with your man and do what your job is out there. You know, you can set your defense up to defend against it, but usually when you've got a backfield, like a full-house backfield like this, the way they get you to... To, to, to break down is when you start not thinking about your priorities and what you got to do. Four yard carry for number 47, Chris Duecki brings up second down and six. So see the old full house backfield. These are fun. These are this is a good offense. Straight across to give up the middle. Fumble. The ball comes loose. Catholic Central will recover and lose about a yard on this carry. Yeah, you can see those uh, those Glenn players down there. Steve Balling. He's pumped. You know when we said when the offense went three and out. You know, you could say a lot with your defense, and how many times have you seen teams say it with their defense early? The carry is by Milam Brooks, number 11. The ball popped loose by the tough John Glenn front. Yeah, all 11 of those guys on D now, they got, they got that look in their eye like, you know, they want to make the next tackle. It's like when you get out there and you just, you know, when you're just starting, you're cold and that. Now they start hitting and start getting into this game. and Comes out of the wash with a one-yard loss. Brings up third and seven now. 9.09 to play in the first quarter. Play action call being chased in the backfield. He's got to hurry to the near side. He's going to be dragged out of bounds. And the John Glenn Rockets have held. Yeah, that was uh, Nick Neshwat. 
You know, he almost committed. He looked like he was playing like an outside linebacker. He came in to contain, got outside, and he was able to chase him down and get him outside. If, if uh, the quarterback could have probably cut the corner and got up, he would have had the first down. Boy, I tell you what. It's funny because when you shoot in there and that guy gets, your eyes get this big when he's five feet in front of you, but he gets, if he gets to the outside, but he did a good job. It's on fourth down, Catholic Central, the punt back deep, Antonio Gibson, Paul Morandi. Gibson's going to let it bounce, he's going to feel it at his 15, slips, and they're going to call him down. So went down. a bad break there for Antonio Gibson. That was a smart play though, that ball was bouncing towards him, he picked it up, that ball probably would have died on the one yard line if he didn't, so that's a good call by him, you know, heads up play. So with 8.52 to play in the first quarter, John Glenn will take over on their second possession at the 15-yard line. Each team three and out on their opening possessions. Yeah, you know what? We used to say to the kids all the time, you know, across the line of scrimmage, anytime it's your offense or your defense, they're in the same position you are. They know it's life or death. It's one game. You don't have to beat them every play. You just have to beat them on the right play. Three wide receivers for John Glenn in the game number 14, Dave Heaney. Paul Morandi to the top of the screen. Dave Jarrett to the bottom. Barrett gives... Antonio Gibson on the carry, maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage. John Glenn, they've normally mixed the run with the pass, and it's worked well for them this year. They've shuffled in and out a lot of players. Coach Gordon likes to substitute, especially his younger players, to get experience no matter what game of the year it is, so to speak. Yeah, but, you know, these kids that come into the school back in early August, you know, they think about this, and here they are. And you got a good chance of making it when you're on a Catholic Central team. I mean, they got a great history. John Glenn's got a great history. This just becomes a real good game. Taking a look at number 70 there for uh, uh, for Glenn, Marcus Dugas, Mark Dugas. And he's big inside that line there. Well, these teams have met once before in the playoffs, 1988. Catholic Central defeated John Glenn. So through eight years and many players, there really isn't a rivalry here between these two because the odds of them meeting are very rare. But... John Glenn's got the home field advantage, and Rob, the crowd was here in full a half hour even before game time. Yeah, I was surprised I had to park way out over, <laughs> over there, but uh, it's good to see a crowd like this. I mean, this is what, yeah, this is what you like to see. It's a great afternoon. Second and ten for the Rockets. Barrett looks near side. Wants Jarrett. It's tipped. Number 40 on the play, Nick Mastriani defended the pass. Yeah, he got up there pretty good, and, you know, that ball might have dropped in if he hadn't deflected it. So Glenn faced with a third and ten situation, 8.22 to play in the opening quarter. We have no score. Yeah, you just you just do something, you know, a little bit less conservative, but, you know, high uh, high percentage. You know, something maybe a little slant pass. We saw on the last third down they did when they had the ball the first time. They tried that little slant pass. You know, and I'm sure Catholic Central is going to look at it and see. They're going to come up and probably give them the, you know, the ten yards they usually give them. They get them up with seven yards now they're deep. Well, one interesting matchup you want to watch is Dave Jarrett, 32, against number 44, Jason Marzek. That's 6-3 against 5-10. I know. See, if they line up something like this to line up, you can't see it on the screen down there, but you're going to see, uh, you'll see the receiver come in. When you line up one-on-one -on -one with that kind of room, you, know, you tap the top of your head, you call the audible, and you hit him in the slant, because that's probably your best, your best bet, because you got a lot of room for that runner to run compared to the short side of the field where they had two-on-two -two and it was stacked. You know, th these guys up here in the... Uh, in the press box here, they get a chance to see this, and not everybody gets to see it. Man, you just start formulating your game plan like that, and here we go again. If they go one-on-one -on -one out there, man, I'd, I'd, if that's a quarterback, my eyes would light up that big. Well, Barron knows the mismatches, if anything. Be able to read it at the line. He gives it to Spearman, draw play up the middle, but he's going to be tackled by number 70, the leader of the defense, Gino Di, Di Giando Menico on the tackle. That's a mouthful there. <laughs> I was looking at that name. It doesn't take one breath, it takes three before just he finishes his last name. Just call him Gino. There you go. We got a nickname, Gino makes the tackle number seven. He brings up now fourth and ten for the Rockets. Chet Rezo punt from his end zone. Yeah, they're going to get some good field position out of this. That's actually, a little tough, especially in front of your home crowd like this. You haven't been to the playoffs in about, what, Actually, Rezo backed up to his goal line. Just don't make any big mistakes. You know? Stop just a decent kick and take a roll to midfield. So Glenn will down it at the 45. Catholic Central will take over on their second possession, much the same area of the field where they took over on their first possession. Yeah, yeah, just let it go. Defense, just let's not make the mistake here. Let's not let's play mistake-proof football. Now, I know we're not a, we really don't see a, a Glenn team-type blitz. I, I remember doing a lot of games this year. They just they don't they're not they aren't a, they're not they're a smarter defense than they are aggressive defense. It wouldn't be wouldn't be surprising to see Gordon throw in a little kink here. 
You know, you always want to make that quarterback look. First and ten for the Shamrocks, full backfield. Call on the option, takes it himself. Now gives it off last minute. Nice carry by number 20. That's going to be Greg Alcala, one of the leaders on the rushing this year for the Catholic Central Shamrocks. Good play. Smart quarterback takes that type of guy to play that kind of position on a option type offense. And, and it, you know, you're going to get one tire defense. They're going to be chasing that guy all day long. And all they got to do is just sort of contain him and, and say, let's bend but not break because the option can kill you. If you bend and say, all right, we'll give up two or three yards per carry, but let's make sure that either the quarterback keeps it or he pitches it and we'll concentrate on that. Gain of six for Alcala. He had 663 yards this year with a five over five average. And this time the Glenn defense, led by that tough front line, says Catholic Central, you're not getting across midfield. Steve Powling shot in there, looks like he just went low, and the, the play was just a really quick dive. And uh, when a play like that develops, if you can get in there just the slightest bit inside the, the backfield, you can disrupt it. You saw what he did. He just took the legs out from under him. And, and he hit, uh, Palling hit him just as that fullback took the first step with the ball. Well, John Glenn, they have a tough off defensive line led by 76, Ira Bargan, the captain. Steve Paling, 54, Jim Stafford, 25, and Jason Crofton, 88. The front four, tough this year, yeah, we along called with that their great names. linebacking core. Called their names a lot this year. Third and four for the Shamrocks. In the back, Alcala wants to throw. Got a lot of time. Nearly dumped in the back. The lays pushed out of bounds. <laughs> Half Maybe the team went with him. And a late flag. As a scuffle ensues, there's that big number 89 for Catholic Central. 47, that's Mike Danzak. He was there to help Alcala on the sideline. I wouldn't be surprised if they picked that flag back up because I don't think that he, uh, you watch, I think there's a good feeling. You can see him talking it over right now, but... Uh, I think he just saw all those red and blue jerseys there, and he immediately. Well, there was a good shame. There was a good six or seven rockets that got Alcala on the back, but that's a personal foul against Catholic Central. So a late hit out of bounds. Thought might have went against John Glenn because of the sidelines it was on, but Catholic Central will be penalized here and will be forced to punt here on fourth down. That's one of those nice penalties where you, it doesn't matter. You, you lose the down plus the yardage, and that's going to help Glenn. And here you go. You know, and, and here's the things you want to try to stay out of, whether or not, uh, you know, it seems to me like maybe it was provoked because of the way they tackled the ball carrier. I mean, he said something, but if it was, if it was over aggression, I can say one thing, yeah, but I didn't see it. But from the other side, the coach saw it. And if it was out of, you know, trying to get back at a Glenn player, that, ooh. It's on fourth down from the 32. Catholic Central will punt number 14, Jason Hamilton, back. Gibson and Mirandi are back at their 35 for John Glenn. Going to be fielded by Gibson. Takes it on one bounce at his 32. Straight up the middle. Gets across the 45 to the 50. And a terrific return by Antonio Gibson. Gives Glenn excellent field position. Their best so far. Sure. I mean, look at what happened so far. Look at the last two plays. The defense gets the crowd pumped. The special team gets the crowd pumped. Hey, when would that have been a perfect time for that to happen when your offense isn't really clicking yet? And this is, this is what it's good. This is a Chuck Gordon team right here. Everybody's contributing. 33-yard punt there for Hamilton and an 18-yard return by Antonio Gibson, number four. You know, every play that is played in these playoffs, he, in, in the eyes of his players, he just gets bigger and bigger and bigger to coach this. Six and a half to play opening quarter, no score. John Beecher, a tight end now, number 86 in for Glenn. Yeah, look at a nice tight offense there. That's what you, there you go. That's, that's Glenn football right there. Two tight ends, a couple receivers, two backs, and just let them go. They give to Spearman, number 15. Reggie carried over for 1,000 yards and had over 10 touchdowns this year. Especially, he was great on the special teams, but... The fact is that I think Coach Gordon knows that Spearman is his running game. That's his bread and butter, so keep him off the special teams. Yeah, but, you know, in, 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 how many times have we seen it with Barry Sanders? I mean, you can use him as a weapon even if he doesn't have the ball. I mean, you've already sucked up one defensive player. Guaranteed that there's a guy on that field right now that's shadowing Spearman. Gain of five, second and five now for Glenn. The toss to Spearman in the backfield. Met at the line of scrimmage, shakes to the outside, gets out of about the 43, so gives Spearman a couple on the carry. Okay, now Masteroni won't get the credit for it, but he shot in there. Good call on that. He's, the, he's an outside linebacker. He came in, kept this contained. Didn't necessarily make Spearman turn up, but he had, you know, he, he held him up enough for, so that the uh, pursuit could catch him. Got to get these names in on the offensive line. 77, Eric Yakim. 66, Brian Schwessing. 64, Jason Steroff. 65, Rich Jordan. And 70, Mark Dugas. All seniors for John Glenn on that tough offensive line, averaging 229 pounds. Brings up third down and one now from the Catholic Central 40. That's nice. That's nice to run behind. 
This is Glenn's deepest penetration of the game so far. Big play for Catholic Standard Central. Standard pro set, give up the middle. Gibson fights his way hard. They'll have to measure for the first down. They should, they should give him a favorable mark. Yeah, it looks like they gave him a pretty favorable mark on there. Oh, I don't know, the ball's right on the 40. Well, the judge is standing just shy of the 40, about the 39, and the marker is just about inside the 39, so maybe a, a matter of inches, Rob. Yeah, I'll bet you got it by the stripe. Well, with the home field and everything, too, I think maybe the refs, well, you never know what can happen down there on that field. Yeah, it takes a while. You know, everybody's a little geeked up. This is, you know, this is nice. I mean, it, both teams want to go on from here and eventually get to the dome. As we speak, Dearborn Fortson plays Clarkston. And it is a first down, like you said, Rob, just by inches. And the other regional game in Region 3 that John Glenn is in, as we were saying, Dearborn Fortson playing Clarkston this afternoon, the same time this game is. So, and the winner, if John Glenn happens to win this game today, they'll stay at home for the next game. But, like you said, and I think the coaches know more than anything, take one game at a time, yep. one play at a time. One minute, one play, one call, one block at a time. First and ten for the Rockets from the Catholic Central 40, 5.43 to play in the opening quarter. Have fun. <laughs> that's, yeah, the most right, sure. that's the most important thing. The referees want an accurate spot of the football, and on the Catholic Central sidelines, maybe a bit of discussion. So Glenn will set back up at the line of scrimmage. Morandi is a receiver to the near side. Jarrett in as a slot. Near side offense, the crowd getting into it here. Barron fakes, it's the end around for Jarrett, through the middle. Takes a couple of tackles, gets to about the 37-yard line. Nice to steer off the 64. He was a pulling guard out there, made a good play. Got his man, blocked him, let let the runner get to the inside. And he had one. If he had another, just if he had another step, he probably would have broke even further. But it's a good play, a developing play. It's, it's a tough play, a play that takes a little time. When Rob, you got a pulling guard and a guy's coming around from the right, it's sort of like a sweep. And we've seen that reverse play work on Jared before. He scored a 49-yard touchdown earlier in the season on that reverse play. Now he comes out as a wide receiver. Two to the far side, one in the backfield, second down and nine. Barrett looks to throw, a lot of time. Cross looks for Lou Hartwood, makes a great catch at about the 22-yard line. Yeah, he just curled in underneath that deep zone. Probably it's one of those plays where you tell the receiver, you go down, you feel like he's been cut, you cut, and the quarterback, you can see, he's just kind of hung back in that pocket. Good protection. Hartwig, six foot three, 170 pounds senior, wears number two. Caught a couple of touchdowns this year. Reggie Spearman comes in now with the play from the sidelines. 4.35 to play in the first quarter. And Glenn has a first and 10 at the Catholic Central, 23. Yeah, again, nice tight offense coming up. A couple tight ends. They, they're going to keep most of their power on the inside there. That's Beecher in motion, number 86. Gibson in the backfield leads the way for Spearman. Spearman shakes, jukes. He's pushed forward to the 20. Yeah. He got pushed most, a couple of yards on that push. Looks like he's getting in that backfield. That defense is getting in the backfield pretty quick. Interesting note about Antonio Gibson, Rob. He is the cousin of Lorenzo Guess of Wayne Memorial High. And last week, Wayne and Glenn had a terrific tussle here with Glenn coming out on top, 36-18. So there's a bit of blood brewing from last week coming into this one. And Gibson obviously has the upper hand on his cousin playing in a playoff game. Yes, definitely. You want to show him. <laughs> Second and eight from the 21. Gives straight up the middle to Gibson. He's met at the line of scrimmage and maybe gets a yard or two on this carry. Yeah, that's a good run. You know, he, he went in. He saw that he didn't have room. He bounced that ball to the outside and picked up, you know, it was only probably three yards. But, you know, they're in four-down territory, I would think. <laughs> but then up. again, that's easy for me to say. <laughs> so this will bring up third down now for John Glenn. Justin Barrett and Lou Hartwig come in from the sidelines. Well, Chuck here's and here's what you got to think. The first time they had the ball third down, they did a little slant play. Second time they had the third and long, they tried that draw play. You know, so as a defense, you're saying, all right, they've mixed it up pretty good so far. You know, what are they going to do now? Look, they got two guys wide to the short side because Spearman's in the backfield. Three receivers to the far side. Barrett looks, throws for Jerry. It's caught by Paul Miranda. He tries to lateral to Lou Hartwig and it's out of the six-yard line. That was a good play. You know, if he would have lateraled it a second earlier, he would have had six points. You can see as soon as he caught the ball, 
he was turning and looking. And uh, Do you know what that reminds me of, Rob? 1982, Miami, San Diego. Duriel Harris makes the catch laterals to Tony Nathan off a David Woodley pass and a touchdown score. That was so long ago, but it looked reminiscent of a place much like that. That yeah, was pretty funny. He got spun around, and there's that red jersey sitting right, so that's pretty good. First and goal for John Glenn from the six. I was yeah. corrected. I thought Dave Jarrett made the catch instead. It was Paul Morandi, number 10. Tried to lateral to Lou Hartwig. Toss in the backfield. Spearman shakes. Gets across the five to about the four. Yeah, I was really surprised because they're going to the short side. We've seen Glenn do that a lot. You know, a lot of people say, well, why do you go to the short side of the field when you've got all that field to play with? And, and, and you just use that wide side of the field as sort of a decoy and hope all you need with, the, with Reggie Spearman is one good block in the backfield, and he's going to get in there. Catholic Central coach Tom Macrob was worried about Justin Barrett earlier in the week, but for the simple fact of his height and the advantage that he actually he can throw the football and throw it well. Second and goal from the four. Barrett, short drop, looks for the corner. It's Morandi. Oh, he can't hang on to it. Incomplete out of bounds. He had it. That was a good. That was a good pass. He had his hands on it. But, ooh. And third and goal here, it appears that John Glenn will call timeout to come over to the sidelines and talk things over. Well, they've got about four yards. They got two plays. It, you know, it, it really depends on this play, the third down play. I mean, because if you score, of course, you don't have to worry about it. But, you know, you might be thinking, like, two, you know, with the running attack that they've got, just to bang it up in the middle twice, just boom, boom. Because even if you don't score, you got those guys down, you know, on the, on the one yard line, because you got to figure if you try to throw it, yeah, touchdown, but you can always get intercepted. It appears that Catholic Central, Rob, has shut down the running game so far. Spearman hasn't been able to crack that defensive line yet, and even getting to the outside, the linebackers are keying in on their men and coming over, meeting Spearman at the line of scrimmage. He's not gained too much, and Antonio Gibson, although he's a bit tougher and thicker, let's say, and has a, you know, a, a stronger uh, center of gravity, he still can't crack the line of scrimmage either. Yeah, but you know, you, you've got two different completely styles of runners in there, and again, as a defenseman, you have to think about how those, you know, those type of styles are running, but, you know, they're really doing a lot of things with their offense, I noticed, they're, you know, going to the right, they're putting the, uh, the, the formations to the right, to the left, using shorts, they're using all their tools, because you think about it, this is it, I mean, there's no reason you should not use the, all your plays. And as a coaching staff, you think to yourself, you know, during the season I could count on them running maybe 15 total plays. Now you're looking at 25, 30 different types of plays with different formations. So, Well, we'll see what Barrett runs here on third and goal. Across the line, he jumped too soon and a great stance call by John Glenn, number 70. That's Gino for Catholic Central. He came across the line first. The refs are confirmed to see if he was drawn outside, maybe by the Glen offense. Yeah, well, it's still goal to goal. I don't think they'll get an automatic first down. So it'll be half the distance to the goal line. But I'll tell you what, now be, I would just send it in and just go right up the middle, just follow the center in two times. Yeah, I think they had to move that thing up there a little. <laughs> so it will be third and two now, or third down and goal from the two. Jarrett and Mirandi are to the sneak. far the side of the field. Toss to Spearman. Gibson on the lead. Cuts to the side. Touchdown! John Glenn Reggie Spearman. A touchdown run. And a flag as well ensues. Nonetheless, John Glenn has struck first, but we'll have to see on this late flag. Reggie's hobbling on that knee, or that, looks like that ankle, that ankle that's been bothering him. We'll have to see the referee's call. It is a touchdown. It'll be a dead ball personal foul on John Glenn. They will assess it here on this extra point try. You know, I tell you what, if I was a coach, that's what I would say. Heck with the kickoff. I, these extra points are big at the end of the game. Well, Spearman is, he was hobbling off on the sidelines. He's favoring that right ankle. Yeah, that's not good. So Spearman scores on the two yard touchdown run, led by Antonio Gibson through the middle and on then to the outside. I think I'd call a timeout here. Uh, I mean, a point is a point. It is an all-important extra point, however, because of the fact that if you do score a touchdown on the next drive down Catholic Central and they do kick the extra point, sometimes one point is just as good as, as a touchdown win. Oh, you better believe it, especially in, in these kind of games. Steve Paling down to kick. He's got the boot, number 54. Kicks it up. It hits the upright, and it's no good. So John Glenn leads 6 to nothing with 2.15 to play in the opening quarter. A big play to come later on if the game stays close. I'll tell you what, man. I go back into that Catholic Central huddle right now over on the other side of the sidelines. I'm the coach. I'd say it's like they didn't even score, pals, because we could score and take the lead. So it's like get that right out of your head. I'd say it's still 0-0 and just let's bang it. 
it's just as important as two field goals, let's say, like you were saying. So Coach Tom Mack on the sidelines has got an advantage here with Catholic Central coming back now on the offensive set. So we have 2.15 to play in the first quarter. John Glenn strikes first. A couple of Catholic Central penalties help Glenn get down the field a little faster. Yeah, they're down on the sidelines working on Reggie there. That's a big part of their offense. You just wrap it, keep it from swelling. Yeah, the important thing on a, on a sprint, ankle sprain is to keep momentum and keep moving because if you take that shoe off at halftime and give it a rest, it's going to, like you said, blow up like a balloon and he won't be able to walk on it the rest of the game as, as he did to start. That'll be all right, though. So paneling to kick back deep to receive Alcala number 20 and 83. That's Josh Christensen. He's to the near side. Paling on the boot. Nice kickoff. Alcala from his five. Quickly up to the 20, and he's nailed by John Glenn defenders, led by number 46, Eric Goldston. Justin Barron also in that tackle. That's a good one. Eric Goldston, a special special teams player this year. He's a, definitely a team player, knows his role in this John Glenn squad. So Greg Call and the Shamrocks of Catholic Central come back out for their third possession. This is their deepest that they've had to work with in their own zone. From the 24-yard line, first and 10. One receiver out to the far side, but they stick with the running play. Straight up the middle, John Glenn, led by Matt Griglio, 34, on the tackle. Want to look at that John Glenn defensive line. Like we said, Ira Bargan, Steve Paling, Jim Stafford, Jason Croft, and the linebackers, Matt Griglio, 34, and Sean Hurd, 35. In the secondary, cornerbacks, Dave Jarrett, 32. Reggie Spearman, he's not out there now, number 15, along with tough safeties, Todd Vaselli, number 12, and Steve Waller, number 8. They start seven seniors on this defense, Rob. Yeah, this is the position you like to be in as a coach. Right? You can bring these players along, you know, play them when they're juniors and sophomores. So when they get to this position, man, they're, they're there. Call on the option, dumps it off to Alcala, but he's met behind the line of scrimmage. So far, Rob, I think John Glenn, they've figured out Catholic Central. That whole play, again, was Nick uh, Nashwad. He got it. Did you see how he didn't overreact when he when he was faced with the quarterback with the ball? He almost said, all right, let, what are you going to do with it? I mean, I've got you behind the line of scrimmage. And a lot of players will take will, will try to commit to that quarterback and kill him because he's right there. And that's how that play developed. And by what, by what he did, delayed it just enough to where the pursuit could pick it up. So on a third down now and 13, Catholic Central employs two receivers. Watch 21, Kyle Zidel to the near side. And the far side, but instead it's through the middle. It's Alcala, number 20. He's going to be wrapped up short of the first down in the secondary by Matt Griglio, 34, and Todd Vaselli, 12. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, right now, yeah, punt. You can tell they can punt because, uh, of course, the punting team's coming in. But all of a sudden, you know, I'm not, that coach, he says, you don't want to give the, the, the moment, any more momentum to John Glenn than you can. I mean, you, you're tempted to go. That was a nice little play, a nice little pass play over the middle. you got a big tight end. You think he could do it again, but let's let our defense hang. So Hamilton will punt on fourth down and one. 15 seconds to play in the opening quarter. Nice kick by Hamilton. Good spiral is going to send Gibson trailing all the way back. He's got to cover this one or just he's going to let it roll. That's a good play. Good play. 15, it's not that deep. 15 yard line. Number 89, Mike Danzak, the tallest player on either side, downs the ball. So Glenn, 85 yards in front of them. They'll start from their 15. Yeah, and they're going to start. Yes, he's, Reggie went to run off there, but he's hold, he's hobbling back on that uh, on that ankle. I don't know, boy. That'll be. I tell you what, you don't see number 15 out there as a defensive coordinator like CC sees, and all of a sudden you can start turning people loose. Well, back comes Reggie. He's hobbling out there. I think he'll play through the pain. I think that a little bit of that is like. You know, you want to show the D you're a little hurt, but when you're not. A little shot of adrenaline yeah. and maybe a little play on this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's so probably 98%. Two seconds left in the opening quarter. John Glenn, 6-0 lead. First and 10 from their 15. Give to Gibson. Drop play through the middle. A terrific run by Gibson across the 25. He gained that first down all on his own as the first quarter will come to an end. So at the end of the first quarter of an exciting playoff game here at John Glenn's Irma Kianka Field, your score, the John Glenn Rockets 6, Catholic Central nothing, will return after this with the second quarter. 10, give up the middle, nice tackle by Catholic Central. Rick Neptula up there, 
It was just one of those. I, I don't think that Tula hit him that hard. I think they just both hit the same time. But boy, it seems that usually the smaller type guy is going to take it on, on the chin, and that's exactly what he did. And I tell you what, boy, that'll get the adrenaline pumping for you right there. Going back to that first, the last play, that first quarter, beautiful hole from our vantage point. We saw that, you know, and, and, and the longer the game goes and those guards and tackles start kind of feeling it out, you're going to see some pretty good sized holes. The second and 10 now from the 27. Morandi comes out of the backfield, but Barrow wants to throw, but he's going to be sacked for the first time today. Back at the 15-yard line, led by the charge, number 36, Joe Stroy. Looked to me like the receivers are running pretty deep routes. I mean, for uh, for being a second down, I think the reason that that, that sack happened is that it wasn't because the, the DBs had him covered. I think they were just still running their routes, and the quarterback was waiting for him to turn up field. It was good that he kept the ball, though. I mean, most times you might see those guys just throw it up. Well, the Shamrocks put enough pressure on Barrett to close that pocket in a hurry. Barrett took a deep drop, and normally Barrett's uh, usually usually he's taking three to five step drops before he throws. He's not used to taking seven all the time, and if he does, he's tendency to get the ball off in a hurry, but that time he just had to eat it. That almost looked like it was a little type of screen. He just kept running and running back. Maybe it's because that defense was in there. Third down and 15. Barrett, short drop. This one's going to be incomplete intended for Lou Hartwig. So bringing out the punting unit for the Rockets on fourth down. Yeah, go, you know, we're right back to where we were before Glenn scored. You know, who's got the momentum here? Who wants it? You know, who, who's hungry? Now? Who's not going to give up that big play? Joe John at 12 and Joe Saw, number 15, back to receive the punt from Chet Rees. The Shamrock receivers are in Glen territory at about the 47. And Rees will punt from just about the two-yard line. Rees gets off an end-over-end wobbly kick. Saw's going to take it at his 47 for Catholic Central. He's got a good hole down the sideline. He's got a lot of room to run. Saw's going to score a touchdown for Catholic Central. Yeah, he picked up a three-yard punt return. Good block, a couple of good blocks, one really good block. Turned it up, you get somebody with speed in the sidelines, and boom, all of a sudden you got yourself a tie game, or not even a tie game. The Catholic Central with that all-important extra point can take the lead here. It comes with 10-17 to play here in the first half. Hey, well, that guy's got some wheels. He turned up, but he was gone. Got a couple of good blocks down that sideline. Held up that fist before he reached the end zone because he knew six points was his. Catholic Central will take time out here to call. Yeah, they're still working down there. Uh, Reggie Spearman down there. Yeah, you know, you, you can see now all of a sudden that momentum has shifted a little. And it's just going to be back to, all right, you know. Let's just get tough, let's get hungry, let's get mean. Well, the Glenn players, I think they're shaken but not stirred as far as the special teams goes. Yeah, got a nice crowd here today. Big, a lot of people. They're going all the way down the uh, the fence down there. Oh, standing standing room room only. <laughs> And now on the Catholic Central sidelines, we've been to here to some Glen games earlier, like in the regular season. That op the opposition sidelines are never that full. That's as full as you can get. So yeah. you know we're talking big business here. They gotta they gotta practice up for the big for the dome. <laughs> when they get twenty thirty thousand in there, but you know Glenn, play, Glenn yeah John Glenn always has a good turnout whenever they whenever they play at home, depending on who they're playing. Well, Catholic Central, they're just the defending class AA state champs. They went thirteen and zero last year. This year seven and two. John Glenn, they've not reached the playoffs since nineteen ninety four. So on for the extra point, Aaron Rock, number 31. So much it's up. And it's good. It's a big point right there. So a big extra point, like you were saying, Rock, for Catholic Central, they take a 7-6 lead. And the John Glenn Rockets home crowd pumping these guys up to come back out on the offensive set here. Yeah, you go back down, you get in the huddle, and you just say, all right, let's do it again. Let's go right down the field. And let's, let's not make the mistake. Let's make sure, you know, because you, know, you Catholic Central team, they're pumped up now, you know. You know, you could probably catch a guy that gets a little overzealous or something. And, and uh, you, can really get a, you can really tell a good coach team on how these both these teams are. I mean, both these coaches have been, it seems like, in uh, Thomas Mock 
Yeah, for a Catholic Central, Chuck Gordon better off for eons. So they, you know, they know how to get these kids psyched. Rob, we were talking before, we mentioned the extra point. Catholic Central had a run in with Detroit DePores earlier this year in which they lost by a single point, one of their two losses. So an extra point can come up at any time during a game, and that's when you have to think, well, okay, we missed one. Maybe we can come back with a two-point conversion. Should we score again? And maybe even a field goal will come into play later on in this game should the game stay close. Yes, and you know what? It makes you totally have to, to rechange your thought after every touchdown once you miss one extra point. Rock kicks it off, looking for Jarrett, 32. Takes it at about his 16-yard line. Jarrett shakes a couple, now he's going to be wrapped up, leading the charge, number 98, Nick Salaski. Six foot, 203 pound lineman, running back defensive end for Catholic Central. All those blockers are about 10 yards ahead of him, he's the only one back there. But probably a little pile on there. You, you, you get down in that pile, get in his face. So 10-10 to play in the first half. John Glenn will take over first and 10 at their 27. Spearman looks like he's hobbling a little bit on that ankle. You have to keep an eye on him. I mean, it's, it's the type of injury, like I said, if you stay on it and stay loose, you're gonna be all right. But, uh, if you, you know, a nice long drive would probably set his ankle just perfect. Morandi and Hartwig to the far side as receivers. In the backfield, it's Spearman. Shakes. Gets across the 30 to about the 32. He didn't, he didn't look that hobbled on that play. He weaved in and out like that. Yeah, you can tell he's getting a little bit of fire in him. Well, like you're saying, Rob, probably a psychological factor in favor of the offense. Well, you, when you look at him, you can't see him on the screen right there, but you know he just hobbles. He hobbles, and you have to think to yourself, you know, can I can I lighten up on this guy a little bit? When he's coming through the line, all of a sudden, boom, he's gone. Dave Heaney checks in now, number 14, as a wide receiver. You know, you'd almost come down to thinking, like, all right, it's his right ankle, so whenever he's running to the right, you know, we've got him because that's that sore ankle he can't cut. But when he's going to the left, he's got that good left ankle. He can cut up still. Play a stop momentarily. Glenn working with a pro set offense this time around. Give the Spearman. Changes direction. Forced forward at the 35, about the 36-yard line. Tackle by Nick Zalaski. Hey, there's nothing wrong with going in a third and three or a third and four. You can take those any time and just tell those running backs, you don't have to get it all at one time, all right? Let's go. What, what were the two gains? Three, three, or four and three, or whatever it was, the first two downs. And you can do a lot when you only have three yards to go. And this is where you can come up with a big play. John Glenn averaging over 30 points a game this season. They're not used to playing close games. They had to come from behind back on November 1st against Wayne. They were down 18-7 going into the fourth quarter, so they're used to coming back from being down. Now, right I, I really don't think it really matters at this point that uh, you've been in close games or not. It does help, but, uh, you know, the blood's flowing. Third and three, Barrett, slant pattern, met at the line of scrimmage by Masteroni, number 40. He read that telegraph to perfectly. Yeah, that, you know, I didn't even have a chance. He could have probably stuck him a little bit harder, but he, he just wanted to make sure he got the tackle. You don't have to drill him, just tackle him. That's all we ask. So on fourth down, the Rockets will once again punt Chet Rees. All right, let's, you know, on the sidelines, your special teams coach for Glenn just going, I know it's not going to happen two times in a row. Just everybody go down in their lanes, stay in their lanes, keep them contained on the inside. There you see the punt return man, number 15, Joe Saw. Saw will field this one. No, now he'll let it go. Glenn will down it at about the 36-yard line. That was pretty weird. Now, yeah, boy, he had some room on the outside there. I think that maybe he just didn't get to it in time, didn't want to, like, cause a fumble or a turnover there, so let it bounce. And that's how he's tough to do, let the ball bounce two feet from you. Because, man, all it's got to do is hit you in the ankles. And... So a 34-yard punt for Chet Rees and the Catholic Central Shamrocks take over, first and 10. Yeah. 7.55 to play in the second quarter. D's got to step up here and stick them good. Full backfield call, gives it to the lead man, that's Dweki, 47, gets it across the 40 at about the 42. Yeah. Felicki in the tackle there, and he's a linebacker, and when you usually going, when you usually got a linebacker, who's usually a little bit smaller than a fullback like that. It's a good tackle on him. They're hitting those quick little hitters, off tackle, boom, boom. You know, you, they don't take much to develop, and all you gotta do is squeeze through there, and you're gonna get some big yardage. Six yard carry for Dweki, second down and four. Look at that offense, really tight. That's so hard to defend against. It seems like it could be easy, but it's so hard. Dweki once again on the carry. Not much there, met by Matt Griglio and Sean Hurd. Yeah, you got a nice good slashing runner, uh, like Greg Call up there. 
and the other running backs in there. And, and when you get everybody tight in there like that, it's it, it's so hard because all those blockers are there and everybody makes their block. And it, usually there's two or three ways you can go as a runner. Third down and two now for the Shamrocks. Watch Alcala, number 20, as a decoy. Duecki on the ball carry. Looks like he's got enough for the first down. Just about the midfield stripe. Yeah, you can see with every play that the, the Catholic Central offense is coming up the line, and they feel like, yeah, they can. They can produce, and we will produce. A lot of power in their running game, led by Duecki. He's one of the tougher, more bulkier guys, I guess, so to speak. He goes 6'1", 215. First and 10 from the 49. Just about six and a half to play in the second quarter. Duecki again. This time he's met at about the midfield stripe, so give him one on the carry. Yeah, right up the middle there. Nothing big, nothing uh, nothing fancy. Just going to say, all right, you know, all of a sudden I feel like my guys are a little stronger and a little, they want it a little more than your guys, so we're going to run it right up the gut. Very hard unless you just get a, a weird freak fumble, but you know, no interceptions, no pitches, no nothing. Just right up the middle and bang it down. Just say, can you take us? And more, more times than not, that straight-up-the-gut offensive type of run will wear down the defensive oh, yeah. line over the course of the game, and, and generally it wins out more times than none. Call, sack, pitches it back to Alcala. They're going to lose a few yards on this one. John Beecher, 86, red call perfectly. No, I don't think we had to call that number. That was big. He was in that backfield real quick. And what I think it was is that it looked like maybe a, a missed assignment on the offensive line. He probably had a pulling guard. And uh, the halfback or the fullback in the backfield didn't pick him up. He just shot through there. Well, the last two times Alcala was used as a decoy, and Call this time needed that decoy badly to get that ball. This is a good call. This is a good call of timeout here. You know, you got a lead, you got the clock, you got the time. There's no reason to get fancy and, and, and get, let's keep it calm. We've got the timeouts. Let's take them. Well, the Shamrocks have scored, outscored their opponents 201 to 74 this year, and. Their last few games, 89 to 13, so they can turn on the offense when they need to, but right now they're basically just eating up the clock, just methodically taking apart this Glenn defense little by little. Yeah, I would say I would say methodically, but taking apart the defense. The Glenn defense has been sticking. They've been doing good. They're not giving up the big play, and of course, uh, Catholic Central is not going for the big play. I think we've seen maybe two or three passes from, from CC all, all afternoon, but uh, you know the, the defense is saying, you know, let's not give up the big play, and, and yeah, we'll give up two, three yards, because it's that type of offense. You're going to give up yards when you got a nice running team like this. There's, there's no way around it, unless you just basically blow through their line. But, you know, let's just not make the big mistake. Let's make sure we tackle, and let's keep them in the middle of the field. Basically, I think Catholic Central, they've kept their game between the hashes towards the middle of the field. They're not much of an outside type of uh, offense. No, we haven't seen really, except the, the option. And you really don't have to have speed when you have an option. It's nice to have speed. You just got to have somebody, a good, smart quarterback. And that they have, and we've seen that on the option. But, and you know, unless they really haven't run the option that much, and that's up to a coach's decision there. If they're doing good like they are between the hashes, like you say, that makes it even more of a weapon. Third and 11, Paul gives it to Alcala through the middle. He's got the first down and a little bit more. He sprints out to the outside. He's got the sidelines. Vaselli can't tackle him. Jarrett's the last man, but Alcala's going to score. 52 yards for Catholic Central. Got a nice few blocks there towards the end. Yeah, a little drop play. You know, and I'm sure that the coaching staff is talking about that. You know, let's keep the middle. Don't commit. Let, let our outside guys commit. But do you want to get those two tackles on the inside on defense to stay there like a post? Don't move. Don't go to the outside. Don't try to buzz it. Let's just feel them out and let them get the four or five yards. So but, for the uh, last five minutes, Catholic Central has turned this game around. Now they have the lead 13-6. Extra point to follow. Rock. Is rock solid. It looked like he kicked the rock there. That was just sort of a dead ball there. Everybody got it through. Kind of had a thud when it went <laughs> up. Know. So with 5-14 to play in the second quarter, Catholic Central extends their lead now to 14-6. What do you do for your Chuck Gordon on the sidelines for John Glenn, Rob? Well, you just uh, you do what you've done, done all year. You know, you, you just say, hey, we've had points scored against us before. Well, I'm sure we're going to get points. Uh, there's nothing, you, know, you don't do anything different. Look at him, he's down there, he's counting heads. That's what, that, that, he's making sure he's got 11 guys out there because he knows they know what's going on. Let's just go out there and we'll do our thing. You know, he grabs a couple face masks in there. So the Rockets, they've given up only 18 points as their highest point this year, or their zenith. And they haven't really come up against formidable com competition like Catholic Central all year. I mean, 
and that's not taking anything away from any other high school program, but within their league, within their conference, they basically said, hey, we're the guys. Unless they played Wild Lake Western twice, they showed Western exactly. They said, hey, we're bringing our game to you, and, and this is you know, our challenge. Well, the worst thing you can do is start to start trying to do something different. Uh, I mean, this, you do what got you here in the first place, and whoever's got the best got you, I guess, is the one who goes on. Rock with a nice kick off to the five. It's Gibson. Through the middle, punishes his way across the 25 to about the 26, 27. The John Glenn will set up, set up shop first and 10. John Glenn will go back to what they do best, and that's just do everything right or try to do everything right. You know, it's kind of interesting because you look at, at Coach Gordon. You know, sometimes you coach a team where you don't even coach a team. You just, you just, you got coaches up in the press box, you got coaches down on the field running plays and out. Yeah, you, you, you watch and you feel. You know, a real good coach like Gordon really doesn't coach. He does his coaching during practice, and he does his coaching with his record and stuff like that. When you get to that point, you know, I don't think you really have, all you're there for, you basically is just to, just to make sure everything runs smooth. It's like setting a plane on autopilot, sure. more or less. Baron toss, Spearman reverses his field, gets through the middle, it's about the 36 yard line, excuse me, the 33 yard line. Yeah, you do, you, you, you put the hands behind your back, and you, you pace up and down the sidelines. One thing we've seen about Spearman, he's got the leg work where he can go from side to side, change direction. Like we said, it, it's, it reminds us a lot of Barry Sanders that we said earlier in the year. Yeah, he, he's got those. You know, and the reason that is is when he even he makes those moves even when he's in the open. Barrett, that, you know, you can second tell. and six to throw across the middle. Hartwig nearly picked off, and it is picked off. Milam Brooks, number eleven, got a great bounce from Adam Tabaro, number ten. Catholic Central takes over first and ten inside John Glenn territory on a bit of a pinball pinball bang bang play. Yeah, got a little lucky there. The uh, the pass was a little high. Got the, the defender was able to uh, get a make on the ball, got there at the same time, deflected it, and uh, bingo, they're standing there with number 11, Brooks, and uh, he's got the ball all of a sudden, and he's the hero. <laughs> he's so pumped. With four and a half to play here in the f second quarter. Catholic Central, first and 10 from the Glen 47. Toss to Alcala. It's about maybe the line of scrimmage. Good play. They strung it out. Like we said last time, before they went uh, sort of semi-wide and were very successful, <laughs> they don't run really wide that much, and you can see why. I'm sure uh, the coaches for Catholic Central know Glenn's got good speed side to side on defense, and, and there's no reason to play into that. I mean, uh, that would be, you know, you, what you do is you attack the point of, uh, of a defense where they're the most weakest, and if they're not weak anywhere, then you just sort of have to feel it out as the game goes on, and now they've stayed right up the middle. Second and ten. Call, decoys it, gives it to Dweki. He gets across to about the 45. You know, I don't think the highlight's going to show that, but Steve Palling and that play, he got through the line. The quarterback had already handed the ball off, but Palling stayed with that quarterback. He wasn't going to make the tackle. He wasn't even going to be in on the play, but that, that's good That's good selective defense, and that's what you'd like to see as a coach. Speaking of Steve Palling, he designed the artwork for the cover of the program. So, artistic on both sides as a football player. Hopefully he can paint a fumble here. Turnover for Glenn. We'll paint a nice picture for the Rockets. <laughs> yeah. Call back to throw. Hasn't had to do it much today. Jukes shakes. Late flag thrown. Probably get a blocking from behind penalty as mulled around up here in the press box. <laughs> Everybody's jumping on that one. We're going to have to wait for those guys to make the call. It usually is. It's usually at that stage of the play. Glenn Guy say against Catholic Central, it is penalty against the Shamrocks. John Glenn, they've only been called for one penalty and it hurt him on the extra point attempt. And I think, and that was even for a late celebration. So the Shamrocks will back up a few. A few being 15 yards. A big 15, that's a big one. You know, that could, that could end a career, but it could also end a drive. <laughs> well, so far the Shamrocks are stuck in neutral with 3.07 to play on this drive in the second quarter. Okay, now here's the play, type of play that we had last time when they scored on a little draw play. Third down and like more than 10, I think it was like 15 yards, and you, I can guarantee you right now that uh, 
it's in the back of their mind. You, you have to play sort of a soft. You can see the, uh, the farthest defender back there. He's going to be playing 10, 15 uh, yards off the ball. That's Steve Waller. That just nobody gets behind you. Third and 20 for Catholic Central. Call. Chase Nishwat hits him in the backfield. Alcala makes the catch. He's good in the open field, but he's going to be stopped well short of the first down. He was one step away from making that close because if he would have got through that tackle, it would have been one man to beat. Alcala goes 5'9", 175, and like we've seen, once he gets in the open field, he's got great presence in mind as to find the open holes and use his blocking to his advantage, but that time he fell well short. So fourth and 15, and back deep, Hamilton will punt. Mirandi is back to receive. Looks like Glenn's going to charge this one. Good kick. Mirandi calls fair catch. 16-yard line, so John Glenn will take over first and 10 deep in their own territory. You know, you could have called roughing. A course uh, of would, But it would have been probably ground. just like, a, if, I don't know if they have in high school, but a five-yard uh, roughing the, the, the kicker. But uh, definitely he went into him. He tried and went into him, but uh, that's good for playoff. Let's make it a game here. 2.07 to play in the second quarter. Catholic Central, they lead 14-6. Two touchdowns on two extended plays of over 50 yards. Joe Side, a 53-yard punt return early in the second quarter. Greg Alcala, a 52-yard touchdown run. For John Glenn, Reggie Spearman had a two-yard touchdown run in the first quarter. And that's your scoring. They had a big extra point that was missed. And John Glenn, should they get down and score a touchdown, they'd have to go for two, no doubt about it. Should have got a half a point for hitting the upright, huh? <laughs> Spearman on the reverse, fakes. Gets to about the 19-yard line. I'll tell you what, right now the story of this first half is Reggie cannot get that one good step into the open. It seems like every time he's got the ball, he just if he could just beat that last man. And, and whether or not that's just quickness on CC or just you know being in the right place at the right time. I and mean, we've seen him this year just just explode through thing through holes and in, in situations where there's no way he should have. Well, so far, the Shamrocks, they've been able to sew up those holes pretty good. Force Spearman to the outside end to change his direction. Second and eight now from the 19. Barron, short drop, throws for Jarrett. Good defense, but he makes the catch at about the 23-yard line. Masteroni, number 40, he's telegraphed each play. Looks like he's reading Barron better than the other defenders. Yeah, you know, it's kind of strange because I've seen him throw a lot better balls on slants towards the middle of the field today. All his throws on the outside today seem to have, seem to be a little late and a little high. He's getting a little arc on him there. And boy, those defenders are able to close a lot on that. Third down and three, and now time is of the essence, so to speak, for John Glenn. They've got less than a minute now to get down in the field and try to make something happen. Gibson on the ball carry, about the 27. Yeah, I think they're going to give him the first down of the mark. Clock will stop for the measurement, and it is a first down for John Glenn. Spotting the football at about the 27, maybe the 28-yard line. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you show him anything deep right now. You save that for the second half. Well, Catholic Central will get the ball to start the third quarter, so John Glenn, they need to do something now. They need to score or get down and just tell these guys, hey, we're sticking around. First and 10 from the 28. Barrett play fake. Wants deep. Got Morandi, but he's got two defenders back there. Call's going to make the interception, and that's almost like a long punt. Yeah. It's a, you know what? I, I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if they, if they purposely don't work the center of the field because number 10 going down on that uh, uh, Morandi, if he would have broke to the inside, they would have been celebrating six points right now. So I think you, know, you can almost see maybe a little bit of game plan here for John Glenn. It's like, let's not use the center of the field. Let's, not, let, let's keep going to the outside on these long pass patterns and throw to the outside, get these guys used to it. And maybe we can burn them with a little hookup in the second half. And, you know, you, you got to start really coaching yourself here now for that second half and just saying, all right, without barring giving up any big play in 30 seconds, Gordon and the coach for Catholic Central are already thinking third quarter. Right? They're thinking third quarter. What have we done right? What have we done wrong? What can we exploit? Well, with half a minute to play, Glenn, they just want to prevent any big play. Duwecki across the 25. Yeah, they're just probably going to let this clock run down, go to the half, they get the ball back, they'll be up by eight. And uh, yeah, you got to get, a, you got to huddle up as a coach and say, you guys up in the press box, man, what, you know, I'm sure Gordon sees it all, but uh, how many times did we see that, that, that middle of the field wide open? Well, John Glenn, they've had the playoff experience for the first time in a couple of years. They had, a, uh, they had their experience cultivated last year. 
maybe a little green behind the ears with their first playoff game in two years. Catholic Central, the defending state champions, Coach Tom Mack knows what his team is capable of. Just plug the players in that you lost from last year. Let the talent speak for themselves. I think it's more or less of an experience. Again, maybe a David against Goliath type of game we'll see in the second half. But your score at halftime is Catholic Central 14, John Glenn 6. Stick around because we've got an exciting second half in store for you when we return on LO11 Sports on Continental Television. Gorsica, we thank you for joining us this afternoon or this evening, wherever you may be. Your score at halftime, Catholic Central 14 and John Glenn 6. Well, Rob, we saw some pretty good competitive football in the first half. John Glenn, we saw their offense get going early but stutter towards the end of the first half. Catholic Central relied on their special teams and they relied on Greg Alcala, number 20. He basically was a decoy for most of the half, but once he touched the football, look out, you know, the running game was going for the Shamrocks. Yeah, I saw special teams contribute big time for the Shamrocks, and anytime special teams contribute, that is an awfully good, because it can make up for any, like, lack of, of uh, progress by either the offense or defense. You know, sometimes it's almost good, and I, and I wouldn't want to be like this as a coach, but it's almost good to go into the halftime sort of down by one score because, man, it gives you something to think about and, 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 and channel. When you go into the halftime with a lead like the Shamrocks did, you just don't have that right mindset because you got the lead and, you, and you're feeling good. I would rather go into a second half feeling hungry, hungrier than you were when you came out because that's when the home crowd's going to get you into it, and that's when one big play is going to get you back in the game. And as soon as you start the second half, all of a sudden that time in the back of every player's mind starts to weigh. 24 minutes of football lie ahead of us, folks. Steve Peeling to tee it up. Alcala, number 20 from his two. Through the middle, it's nailed! Number 34, senior Matt Griglio makes the tackle, and he gets up gingerly. That was a... Favoring. He's favoring something. I'll tell you what, he stuck his he, he just stuck his whole body in there and said, I'll take it on the chin for you guys. Now, I'm going to go sit on the bench for a while, but you guys stick him. Well, he definitely is favoring probably a shoulder, it looks like. Harry. So Catholic Central takes over first and ten at their own 25. Yeah, he, he, he definitely was in the right place at the right time, and you could tell he's uh, going to help him over to the bench, but in the meantime, we've got a second half to contend. That's going to pump your defense up right there. Trips in the backfield. Duwecki carries. Stopped by Sean Hurd, number 35. Yeah, you want to see bodies flying around and head slapping, and let's get pumped up here, huh? 
Sean Hurd, a junior, will take over the reins in the linebacking core next year. And no. like you said, Rob, I think it's good It's good for John Glenn to have a challenge, more sure. or less. You don't want to be down by too much, but if you know when they're down coming into the third quarter, this, this type of challenge, they got the crowd here, they got all the elements, instead of sitting on a lead and waiting to see if Catholic Central is going to come back, now they have something to work for. Brooks, the ball carrier, gets across the 32 to about the 34. Well, as a coach, you don't want to be in that situation. I mean, you'd like to be up at halftime, but, you know, if you were to in the locker room, I mean, you've got to make light of the good things that you've done. I mean, they know they're down by eight points. You've got to make light of the good things that you're doing right. Make me make some adjustments and some corrections. But overall, I mean, you, I mean, you got to let those guys know that, hey, it's a, totally up to you. Third down and three. We've played a minute, ten seconds of the third quarter. Same formation for Catholic Central. No wide receivers, just tight, Brooks tight run. Nailed, but he picks up the first down. Steve Waller, Todd Vaselli in on the tackles, as long as Nick Nishua at number 40. Yeah, it's like a dog putting its ears back and just and just gutting it out. You didn't see no wide receivers. They're not even going to play with half the field. They're going to just say, you want us, you got to come and get us. Kind of like the grind it out between yep. the hash marks like we were talking earlier on in the game. Playoff football. Especially I mean, Catholic Central, you would think that their uniforms would be a little more a little <laughs> dirtier, know, especially with the white wearing today. <laughs> uh, what's the deal here, huh? So it'll be a first and ten at the Glen third, or excuse me, the Catholic Central thirty-seven. Mm -hmm. Nick Hudson is in as a defensive back, taking the place of Reggie Spearman. Spearman normally plays corner. You can see uh, Jared still on the sidelines down there getting some attention. It looks like the the. the uh, trainer's working maybe like on a pinched nerve or something in the back. He might have bent that shoulder back enough to, to pinch something there. Boy, they need to get him back in there. That's 80, Griglio. 83, Josh Christensen comes into the game now for Catholic Central. He's normally a wide receiver. The line up in the backfield. First and ten. Brooks. Nishwad nails him. Wraps him up. At about the 37-yard line, 38. Uh, that's a good place for Nishwa to come in. Of course, remember, when you're out on that corner, you got to make sure that, because you're the only guy between the ball carrier and the end zone, when you commit like that, make sure that you get to get, get your arms around a guy, and that's what he did. He sort of ran him in face first. Well, John Beecher, Steve Paling, Brian Schwessing, Ira Bargain anchor that defensive front. Yeah, you see when the offense comes together like that and gets tight with two tight ends in a, in a solid backfield. It just shrinks the defense, too, so it's that much more important for someone on the outside to make sure he keeps contained. Gain of one, second and nine in the backfield. It's Brooks. He's going to be wrapped up. And a fumble! Looks like they're going to call the ball down. <laughs> Glenn thought they had it, but Catholic Central looks like they'll come up with the fumble. The jelly was a... Was a good was a good player on that. He got pushed to the outside on his block, but he stayed on his feet and he contained. Made the runner come up inside and pursuit just caught up to the runner. Speaking of turnovers, John Glenn has the only turnover of the game. They have interception. Catholic Central, uh, Catholic Central had two fumbles. That was that being the second one. But other than that, that's been the only turnover of the ball game. Yeah, and that, like we said, that and, and special teams. I mean, you you watch any football game at any level at any time, and any announcer or coach is going to tell you two things: turnovers and special teams. And both have gone uh, Catholic Central's way today. Third and nine, two receivers. Call looks to throw to the side. And it's just out of the reach of 21. That's Kyle Zidell. So bring up fourth down for the Shamrocks in a punting situation. You know, it's kind of interesting, too, because when you watch high school football, you know, a professional team, even a college team, they have that much, you know, that much, you know, the players have developed that skill much better that them passes would have been caught, and it's easier to get the first downs on the thirds long. So when you go into coaching a high school team, you say, all right, well, let, let's, we can, you know, we don't have to really concentrate as much on making passes like that, and if we can just get a good ground game and a solid team effort, you'd be very successful. Hamilton on the kick, Gibson fields it at about a 34. Gets to about the 40, maybe the 43, and a good extra effort. Christensen and Dwecky on the tackle, so John Glenn in good field position to start their second possession. Yeah, this Excuse is me, their first possession of the second half. Yeah, they want to definitely get some first downs. They don't have to necessarily go down and score. They'd like to, but let's get some first downs. Let's get back into the rhythm, give the defense a chance to rest. John Beecher, the tight end. Wide receivers Lou Hartwig, Dave Jarrett. In the backfield, it's Spearman, 15, Antonio Gibson, number four. That tough offensive line, 8.28 to play in the third quarter. 
Rockets from their 44. Barrett gives it to Spearman, and he goes absolutely nowhere. Yeah, I hate to see the defense in the backfield that quick and that easy. And either they're slanting or they're doing different, and they're, they're confusing the offensive line of Glenn. But all in the first half, and again, on this first play of the second half, the running game, although it has been decently effective, not up to that John Glenn standard of, of, of picking up good chunks of yardage. Well, many of these seniors on this John Glenn team, some of them have had experience as sophomores back in 94 when they sat on the bench and watched their last playoff experience that the Rockets have had. So maybe that experience can help them here as all five of the starting offensive lines are seniors. Second and 10. Barron. Deep drops. He's got all day to throw. Nowhere to go. Now he looks for Lou Hartwig, and he makes the catch! He breaks the tackle! Breaks two tackles, unbelievable! Nick Mastrioni makes the catch, but there is the biggest play for John Glenn. Well, you're gonna have, first of all, um, defensive uh, pass interference, so you got a flag way back here at the 40. I don't know if that was the original, but excellent concentration on the receiver there. I mean, that guy was on him, and he just he hauled it in, slipped a tackle, and almost broke it all away. I tell you what, Rob, Lou Hartwig better not do that to me again because I almost lost my voice on that last call. That was unbelievable. Well, we saw the Plymouth Canton game last week where the quarterback, a very mature quarterback, how he would wait for those uh, 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 pass patterns to develop. This, right, this, talking about Rob Johnson. Yeah, yeah, remember how we talked about that? Excellent. This time, uh, the Glenn quarterback sort of had to scramble up, but he had to... The, uh, the sense enough to keep his head up and wait for that receiver to break behind the, the, uh, the, the receiver and uh, just threw the ball up beautifully. I mean, he could have thrown that ball earlier out of bounds or tried to force it in across the middle. An excellent pass catch by Lou Hartwig. That's going to go deep into Catholic Central Territory, but the focal point right now is the injury. It was 89, the it was 89 gold looked like for a second, no? It's 88. Jason 88. Crofton, he's a tight end. He's being helped off the field. So, hey, an injury will give the John Glenn Rockets more momentum now. Uh, he's, yeah, he's not even putting pressure on that leg, so it's, uh, it's probably a knee. Ouch. They got first in... Uh, the they'll be able to get a first down. The call was a personal foul against Catholic Central. So move them even closer to the goal line. First and goal at the four. The original spot of the football was the nine. Half the distance after the play. Yeah, so they got a first and five. 51 yards altogether, 46 on the pass play, five on the penalty. Two receivers, Morandi and Hartwig, to the near side. And the crowd getting into it. Catholic Central brings the house up to the line. Spearman on the toss. Gets maybe one to about the three, maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, number 86 out there, uh, uh, Beach or John, sort of playing the tight end, was trying to keep containment on that defensive lineman. He couldn't. The lineman got up inside and made the uh, the running back commit up into the inside. If he could have contained that block a little bit longer, he probably would have been able to find some room. Boy, that's important down here. It's like you don't just block and then lay off. You just drive that guy into the end zone. Inside seven minutes to play, second and goal now from the four. Give him one on the carry, Spearman. Toss Spearman once again. Jukes shakes, he's absolutely going nowhere. Maybe lost one on that play. Catholic Central knows exactly where Spearman's going, Rob. Yeah, that, that's uh, they tried to go pretty much to the outside, which is uh, uncharacteristic of a Glenn offense. So Barrett does the right thing, the quarterback for John Glenn, calling a timeout. What do we do here, coach? Talk to Chuck Gordon. Oh, I don't know. That's why I'm glad I'm up here. Thinking <laughs> I can speculate strategy. here. I would, I, they're definitely going to have to go to the air because they're not getting anywhere on the ground. And we saw the earlier touchdown that it was a sort of a flare pattern that was almost completed down in the, in the first quarter. Um, we've seen Barron, he's, he's not necessarily on 100% today on the passes going to the outside and having to lead an, a, a player to the outside. I wouldn't be surprised if I saw something like a little button hook, a little slant to the inside, keep the ball low, and, uh, you know, you're looking at even if a field goal is only going to give you 14-9. You're almost looking at two plays to get down in here. Well, it's almost become a question of muscle on the lines for either side. Catholic Central 
powering against that offensive line of John Glenn, and most of the time they're getting exactly to Spearman at the right time. He's not being able to break to the outside at that last moment, get that extra step on the defenders. Yeah, all, all game long he's had, if he could have gotten that one step or just eluded that one tackler, and that's just good defense. That's just aggressive defense, and, they, and, and when, they, when they get there and they get a hand on you, they keep a hand on you, okay? They don't let you slide off and miss a tackle. Here's an interesting point. Dave Jarrett, number 32, checks back in as a wide receiver. He wasn't in for the first two plays, so now they've got three receivers, a tight end, Antonio Gibson in the backfield. No Spearman this time. Good to see Matt Griglio get up off the bench. He's walking gingerly up to the see it, see if these guys can score. But he probably just got the he probably got his bow wrong. Three receivers, maybe a power punish with Gibson. Barron looks to the right side. He's got to get it off in a hurry. Jared's gonna jump. Almost had it, incomplete. Catholic Central call, thought he had an interception. No good. Fourth down for John Glenn. 6.30 to play in the third quarter. Well, Glenn, if they're going to get any points out of it, now's the time to make something happen here on fourth down. Yeah, we we'll probably end up calling a timeout here. Well, if they do, they'll only have one left in the, in the second half here. Eric Goldston checks in now, along with Sean Hurd. And they will go for the field goal, as was mulled around up here in the press box. <laughs> yeah, all the coaches up here in the press box. Well, they've got to come away with some points off of this drive. This drive's got to be a positive thing for the Rockets. Paling's, in it. Paling's attempt will be from 22 yards. Kick is up. And it's good. So the Glen Rockets come out with three. It's now 14-9, Catholic Central in the lead. This bodes a big play in Glenn's favor. Yeah, first of all, it was the pass that, that got him to that opportunity, and second of all, he's saying that Coach Gordon obviously said, well, let's get points out of this, because now, that's basically what that what that was right there, is that extra point that they missed, because now they can afford to go, if they get another touchdown, may Catholic Central have to go down and score to uh, to win it. Uh, put, the, put the game back in your defensive hands, that's your best suit. Let's maybe get a turnover or something. You know, now it just becomes just becomes a sort of a horse race to the end here. Who can, who, who's ahead at the end? I mean, basically that's the key, but you want to put yourself in that position where you've got the best chance. So a 22-yard field goal from Steve Palin cuts the deficit to five points. And obviously uh, Coach Gordon knows he's got confidence in his defense to hold Catholic Central, so. Well, they held them really good in the first half. I mean, we talked about it. It was a, it was a special teams play that, that got them... Uh, uh, one score, and the other score was oh, the third down and 11, and it was a drop. It was a one, one play burn for two touchdowns. Other than that, they really, I mean, they put some drives together, but the defense has, has really stepped up and not let them just take over the game. Hilling sends a high kick, a little short, taken by Christensen at the 10. Gets across to about the 26-27 yard line. And Antonio Gibson gets up gingerly for John Glenn. So the Shamrocks take over first and ten. They might have to turn the lights on here pretty soon. Kind of a cloudy overcast day. Maybe thought of a hint of snow showers just before game time, but the snow has held off. No precipitation. All right, when we started, it was beautiful. Sunny. Typical November weather here. Duecki on the carry gets across the 30 to maybe the 31. Yep, right up the middle. Nothing, anything, nothing, nothing different. Just... Right up the gut of it, a nice three-yard gain. You get another one, it brings up that third and short, and you like to get to that third and short. Coming up on six minutes to play now in the third quarter. No changes defensively for John Glenn. They keep the same 11 that have been out there the majority of the game. A lot of wear and tear, but good conditioning on both sides. Call, rolls out. Looks to throw, finds a hole. Nick Mishwa's going to nail him at the 26-yard line. I almost thought that was going to be a little holding there at first. He was originally, he had this guy him on a headlock. Number 40, Nick Mishwa has been a stellar defensive player here for the Rockets. Yeah, he's, had a, he's got a big role, and that's as an outside linebacker. I mean, you've got a lot of, lot of things to have to contend with on you know, each and every play. And when you get to chase down a quarterback, you, you love it. Nishwatch had a great game. 5'11", 175-pound senior. Third and 12. Call on the draw. Akala. It's worked before. 
Michelli, Griglio reads it perfectly. They knock him out of bounds a couple of yards short of the first down. Todd Vaselli over there well on the tackle with Sean Hurd. They might almost be in two-down territory. I don't know if they're, yeah, I think they're going to send the punting team in, but, boy, it's going to be like maybe only fourth and maybe a yard and a half. Or No, I mean, it's a good three yards there. Must have stepped out of bounds. So it brings up fourth and four. Coach Tom Mack punted on fourth and one for Catholic Central, so more or less he's being as conservative as possible. He's got the lead and he's got confidence in his defense. Good kick, nice high. We're gonna send Morandi back to the 25. He's got room, comes to the near side, got a couple of blocks. Across the 40 to the 45, midfield, reads the defender, and he gets out at the Catholic Central 45. An amazing punt return by Paul Morandi. Yeah, Brian Shrewsing, Made that play number 66. He blocked two guys that were chasing that ball carry. He just laid them out. A 30-yard punt return by Paul Morandi, though. Actually, it's going to be about 29. But nonetheless, a terrific play for the John Glenn Rockets. Now they're in short territory and shamrock territory at the 46-yard line. First and 10, 4.46 to go. Folks, you want playoff atmosphere. You want good football. This is it right here. It'd be good to see Glenn go down and put some points on the board. Spearman on the carry gets across about the 44. Still nowhere to go for number 15. Looks like he tripped there, uh, over, sort of over his own feet, doing a little stutter step there. But boy, it'd be nice to see him break one. Just, just, just to see him go. I think Reggie knows that too. He's, he, like you said before, he needs that one extra step. Maybe, maybe that slight push to one side to give him a, a bigger hole to run through. Well, that, and that's what happens when you play a defense that's quick. I mean, if you're used to playing defenses that are slow, you know, you don't play a seven and two team every week. So, you know, all you got to do is just wait for that one time, that one time, and this is the time to do it. Give Spearman one, second and nine, short drop. Jarrett complete through the middle. The speed picks up. The 6'3", Dave Jarrett gets to the 26-yard line. Rob, Dave Jarrett's been an integral part of this offense. You get in the ball. He's got the moves and the speed. Well, we talked about it. We came in the second half. They're throwing to the inside of the field and not going to the outside of the field anymore. And you put up a little hook pattern like that, get him the ball in motion, and bingo. Look what he's got. A first down. And I'm... Now they're starting, I think, to attack the inside of that field a little bit more. Rob, you called it when we talked at halftime. Exactly. Get the ball inside, maybe over the middle. Jarrett's got the height advantage over every member of the secondary. Greg calls the tallest at 6'2". Yeah, they're starting to spread it out here a little. Barron on the fake. He eludes the rush, but now he's going to have to eat it. The 33-yard line, he's going to take about a five-yard loss. It looks to me, number 32, Dave Jarrett, probably was supposed to be coming in motion in that play because he was just standing still out as a, as a wide receiver and, that, and, and <laughs> poor quarterback had to sit and eat the ball because the ball carrier wasn't there. I think he's supposed to be in motion coming this way. So they spot the ball at about the 33. Call it second and 15 or 16. Call it second and 15 now for the Rockets. Jarrett comes off the field. Two sports star athlete here at John Glenn also plays basketball. Three minutes to play in the third quarter. Barron. Shovel pass to Spearman. That's an incomplete pass. A bit of miscommunication between Barrett and Spearman as to when Barrett was going to get rid of the ball. Yeah, I think, though, that, that uh, Spearman may have taken his eyes off the angle. He had his hands out. It was a little high. He was probably afraid of getting drilled, or he just maybe took his eye off for a second or broke his concentration. That's a tough play to do. When, when you do a little shovel pass like that, you've got to tell your players, you're going to be in the middle of, like, five and six guys when you get that ball. You really have to concentrate on it. If you're thinking field goal territory, Steve Paling's longest is 46 yards this year. Yeah, they need 10 yards. This would be about a 50-yarder, should John Glenn not make it. But it's third down. Barron's going to have to hurry. Reads, and he's just going to throw it away. There were two receivers downfield, Hartwig and Jarrett. It was to the far side. Hartwig was about at the nearest hash mark. It looked like he had Kevin Cruz, number six, breaking across the middle. It didn't look like I think he was worried about getting chased down. Questionable call as to if it would be grounding, but... The referees to no avail nah. do not call grounding. They would have called it by now. So Chet Reese comes down to punt. Short field, maybe want to pooch kick it. Yeah, get him down there. Get him down there let your defense take. It's getting cold. This is a def Yeah, this is it's going to start becoming a very good defensive game here. Greg Call is back, number 17, to receive. 
Rees angles it out of bounds for the sidelines, and it's going to roll out. Good kick at about the 13-yard line. 20-yard <laughs> punt, but it works to Glenn's advantage. Well, they pin right. Catholic Central. He could have kicked that ball 80 yards in the air, and he could have been worse than that. So the Shamrocks, first and 10 from their own 13, with 2.39 to play now in the third quarter. And I yeah. think maybe, maybe the jungling offensive players on the sidelines thinking about what went wrong, but just toughen it up and say, hey, we can do better next time. Well, yeah, I think that it all said, I think it was a, just a, a broken play, that end around. Full house backfield. Zydell to the right, to the near. Duecki on the carry gets to about the 15. Yeah, not much to the Catholic Central offense. Just three backs, give them the ball, find a hole, go up the middle. Uh, like we said, their two touchdowns were on special teams in the long run. So, you know, you got you got to keep telling your players that on the sidelines that we're licking them. We're licking them on defense. We're beating them. We're, we are actually beating them. Gain of two, second and eight now. <laughs> Give to all. Call's going to keep it himself and reverse his field. Through the middle, shakes a couple tackles, is into the secondary, and dives his way to about the 37-yard line. That was a great play. Hit the ball well. Call, he's ran when he needs to this year, over 250 yards rushing. First down for the Shamrocks. This by far is their biggest play so far of the second half. They definitely want to keep the ball. Brooks on the carry, across the 40 to the 43. So now the Shamrocks have two things in their advantage. They have the clock, which they're eating up, and they have the ball. Yeah, you gotta just keep telling your defense, you we're just the score away. That's all we are. You just gotta bend, but don't break. Just make a tackle, don't get too crazy, don't get too wild, don't stop thinking. Just, just keep playing the game that we're playing. Even if the Shamrocks don't score on any possession there, thereafter, they have to have confidence in their defense. Give to Alcala on the outside. Michelli can't wrap him up. Jarrett's going to have to throw him down just across midfield about the 49-yard line. That yeah, looks like Catholic Central got away with a little hold there. Go! 1.04 to play in the third quarter. The ball spotted at the Glen 49. In the game, keep your eye on 89, Mike Danzek, 6'7", 220-pound senior, lines up as a tight end to the near side. Still that tight offense, just that tightly wrapped. Brooks in motion. Call gives it to Alcala to about the 46. Yeah, you can see as they get up to the line here, the Shamrocks now, they're growing more and more confident in each game. They're just popping up from getting tackled, and they're getting back in that huddle, and they're just saying, let's do it. And it, this is the type of drive where you see where one play, boom, you'll just pop it, and you'll be gone. As a defensive, on the defensive side, you just got to say, hey, let's try to force them into a third down situation, a situation where we can win too. Number 86, senior Kurt Camden checks into the game. Now is another tight end. He lines up to the far side. Second and eight, coming up, this will be the last play of the third quarter. Alcala on the carry. Breaks and then he's nailed hard by John Beecher, number 86, and a late flag once again. And this won't be the last play of the third quarter. And the call is against John Glenn. Maybe the refs being a little too uh, quick to draw on this and the flags today. Maybe a couple of questionable calls. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You hate to put yourself into that situation. They had them in it. They had them where they want them. Third and about four or five, and now they're going to get a, yeah, uh, probably unsportsmanlike or a roughing. Well, the linesman is going to mark. One. This is going to be a big penalty. Fifteen yards. Oh, ouch. That's unbelievable because it just looked like a normal play. Beecher made the tackle, but the refs, the refs are the ones that are calling this game. They're definitely not having any, giving any team the advantage as far as taunting, uh, hard tackling, things of that nature. I haven't really seen much, much uh, chin music as they say. I think it's just been more of just exuberance and just trying to get that extra lick in and just, you know, 
once they're down, kick them type thing. But so a see positive that. move by John Glenn at the end of the third quarter. They've allowed no points by Catholic Central. We'll come back for the fourth quarter. Your score, Catholic Central 14, John Glenn 9. We'll return on L11 Sports in a moment. Yeah, that was good. Heads up. At least he, he's sort of trying to direct them. So punting situation, Chet Rees back. Yes, Barbara, you're joining me in a part of... Region 3 in Class AA, taking on the Westland John Glenn Rockets, ranked number one in Region 3 in Class AA at 9-0. Right now, the home team, Glenn, they trail 14-9. to come up on the deciding 12 minutes here in the fourth quarter. Catholic Central leads by five. They've stayed with a full house option backfield the entire game. Nice and powerful, nice and powerful. Alcala finds a couple of holes, flag. This is Usually around that area they call them for holding. Or illegal, you know it's not illegal procedure. They, nobody was moving on the offense. Right, right. Catholic Central will be backed up on the holding call. So call in favor of the red and blue. <laughs> so the ball is backed up to about the 37-yard line. Tell you what, the refs are going to be up there in the yardage uh, gain. I think refs are probably oh, over 100 yards in penalties today. Well, they're and getting a workout, walking the ball back and forth across the field. And really, if you look at it, they weren't like, that's what maybe the... Second holding call, if anything. I mean, there really hasn't been any of the bad mistakes. It's just been, it's just been those those mistakes you make when you're pumped and you're fired up. Those roughing type penalties that hurt. I mean, as a coach, I'd almost rather see those than those the little penalty holding and offside calls. First and 18 from the 37. A lot of the penalties have come on the completion of plays. The give is to Brooks. He's got blockers in front. Gets across the 30 to maybe the 29. That was a great play, number 67 for uh, Catholic Central out there. The, uh, the right tackle pulling, did a nice job, opened up that hole for the running back. So far, well, we've only played a minute of the fourth quarter, but Catholic Central, they've kept the ball through the midpoint of the third quarter into the fourth quarter, so the possession is definitely in favor of the Shamrocks as far as time of possession goes. Yeah, they'd like to pop one in here right now. Even three points would be nice for them right now. Well, a touchdown would force Glenn to score twice in the, here in the last... Stanza. Call. He's being rushed. Ira Vargas got him by the foot. They got to call him down. And they do. Finally, Nick Nishwat's there to put the stamp on the sack. Ira Bargain, number 76, clearly one of the stalwarts on this team, the senior. Yeah, one of two things. Either the play didn't develop quickly enough, or I think they were trying to probably maybe set up a little screen pass that it didn't develop, and all of a sudden he just got too many guys around him. Smart play by the quarterback. He didn't try. He looked like he was going to want to throw it. But he just said, no, I'll take it down. We got a lead, and, and uh, something else might happen. I think when you've got a quarterback by the ankle, Rob, you more or less the referee has to count 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, see if he can get rid of it, and then call him down. Well, you know, you can always tell if a quarterback, I mean, there's always that couple seconds where that'll make or break the play, and that's usually what the refs kind of hang on for. Third and 22 for the Shamrocks. The give, Duecki, he's going nowhere. Brian Schwessing, number 66, comes up with a huge play for the Rockets. Well, that could be a big play right there. I mean, not that they were going to get the first down there, but it just proved them that they, they really weren't interested in getting that first down. But now an interesting thing to watch. Okay, Glenn's got the momentum, the crowd. They've got the change of possession. Watch if Catholic Central doesn't fake punt. Yeah, they're in that down. They're in that territory right there. You got all those guys pumped up. Yeah, coming at you. And they're going to drop them off. Hamilton. Gets rid of it. They don't call roughing. It goes into the end zone, so a good call for Glenn. They'll take over first and 10 at their own 20. Yeah, it seems like uh, Hamilton's been doing some acting. He that, that one time, he was looking good, though. That one time was, might have been illegitimate in the first half. Steve Waller, number eight, is the injured man for John Glenn. He's down on the field. There you see some of the crowd, Catholic Central. They've come out in full force tonight, or this afternoon. I think they are... They got the wind right going at them there. It's uh, probably a little colder than we <laughs> are over here. A little face here. wind burn there <laughs> after this one's over. But you see some parkas out there. Compliments of John Glenn. No, not a bad day at all. 9.25 to play in the fourth quarter. John Glenn first and 10 from their own 20 when play resumes. The only scoring of the second half, a 22-yard field goal by Steve Paling. 
Yeah, they probably, they've had a couple pretty big, you can see on the side, on, down here on the bench, you can't see it now, but you got 88 sitting down there. He's still, uh, uh, Crofton, he was, he was injured early in the first, doesn't look like he's going to make it back. There's big number 70 down there. Uh, Mark Dugas, he went down with the, uh, the knee, and out there you got uh, Weller. Waller. The price you pay. For playing. To, be in, to get to the big dance. Playing in the big, in the big house. Oh yeah. <laughs> so Steve Waller is the injured player. We said before, number eight, plays the safety. Yeah, it, it's tough to start losing these players because I mean these are your first stringers going down. You'd like to see them happen. But here's what we got going on: about 9:25 left in the fourth quarter, and as for as bad as it seems that Glenn has played, I mean they basically have owned the second half as far as the scoreboard goes, and that's that's what you want to own. And, uh, I mean, they got the ball. They've got the time. They're going to get a nice little rest here. Well, Glenn, they've got to get their offense in gear on this possession. They've got 80 yards in front of them, and the optimum word here is touchdown. The optimum word here is Reggie Spearman. Spearman. He's you know, due. got to get him He's going. He's due. He's been quiet. The whole game. And you know what? I think the only reason he's been quiet is a little bit of that ankle, but I think that, that this defense he's played against is a very quick, aggressive defense. We haven't seen really that much misdirection from uh, Glenn. We haven't seen any screen passes from Glenn yet, so if, if, if any bit of the time is now, this is, I mean, it, yeah, these guys are ready to play. <laughs> these guys are still out there. We're almost coming up on two hours for the game, so... Yeah, and typically an uh, average high school game averages between 2, 2 hours, 15 minutes. But uh, when you get into situations like this, when everything's on the line, the uh, coaches take their time, the plays are executed a little bit a little bit more cautiously. So an extension on the game. This game may well last maybe three hours. Yeah, he's walking off. That's good. That's good that he's walking off, off after, uh, in his own power. Waller comes off, looks like he's favored, maybe a Charlie horse. First and ten for the Rockets. From their own 20. Gibson stumbles, maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage. One of the interesting things, Rob, we haven't seen John Glenn throw much on first down. No, and we were talking here in halftime to some of the people up and saying, why don't you throw it on first down? And uh, you know, there's other uh, certain reasons for that. It's been much ado with the buzzword. Yeah, they've been they, they have been effective throwing the ball in the second half, though. Jared and Hartwig split out. They're the tallest receivers on this team. Maybe take advantage of that height against this Catholic Central secondary. Nice. So looks like he's probably calling a little audible here. He's got one on one. Second and eight. Play action. Barrett's going near side. Jarrett can't make the catch. And it's not intercepted either, so Glenn comes away with an incomplete pass. That was a good play by David Jarrett. He noticed that that ball was under throw, and he went back to the ball. So, uh, thus eliminating an interception, which he probably would have been sure that he got up there and, and sort of became a defender as an offense. But, uh, yeah, they're just, they're just letting them receivers go loose and just Barrett, Jarrett's throwing the ball and letting them run under it. Well, they had some safety help coming back in the secondary. One thing we've, I've noticed is Barrett, he, when he throws the ball, there's a little bit too much time yeah, he gets to, it up there. to catch the ball. He's, he's definitely not as sharp as we've seen him. Maybe a little nervousness, this being his first playoff game and everything. No, he, it, it's pretty late in the game now. He's got to snap out of it. Catholic Central tried to call timeout. Can't do it. Barrett directing. He's got to get rid of it. Crossfield, Hartwig. It's going to be too far and almost intercepted. Number 44, Jason Marzik was there. So the Shamrocks, they wanted to call time, but maybe it's a good thing they didn't because they forced Glenn to incomplete a throw. Yeah, it looks like they had sort of like a nickel package. You know, they had like a lot of people back in that, in, back in the passing area, and you could see as the quarterback was trying to direct people on the scramble. And, yeah, that was good, heads up. At least he, he was sort of trying to direct them. So punting situation, Chet Reeves back. Sa and Jana, 15 and 12 respectively, back deep. Sa had a 53-yard punt return earlier in the game for Catholic Central's first score. Big snap. Threes. Short kick. Maybe get a bounce. Jarrett's got to cover that. Jarrett's got to cover that kick, and maybe the Catholic Central gained five yards by Jarrett letting it bounce. No, that wasn't. That wasn't. They may have gained maybe 25 yards tops on that punt. Oh, here we go. <laughs> this is what it's all about here. Defense. 
Chet Rees is only going to get credit for about a 15-yard punt. 16 at that. 8.21 to play. So a short field for the Shamrocks. Yeah, they can afford to take time off, and they don't have to get it all at one time. Shamrock's in good position to shut the door on this game. First and ten. Alcala through the middle, into the secondary, across the 30 to about the 26, 27. He may have gained that first down all by himself. So we're inside eight minutes, second down and one. Give Alcala nine on the carry. Glenn's defense got to shape up now. Yeah, they'll buckle down. They're, they're just going to basically play their basic defense. Duecki on the carry, gets across, picks up the first down inside the 25 to the 23. Now Catholic Central's experience will come into play this late in the game. Got a lot of beef up there. Well, they might start maybe wearing them down, though. I mean, they held them pretty good check all the way up until now, but uh, they just keep going at them, keep going at them. Yeah, they are going to wear them down. One thing up until now, Catholic Central has also kept this Glenn crowd out of the game. Yeah, definitely, absolutely, since that first touchdown back in the first half. First and 10 from the 24, seven and a half to go, fourth quarter. Alcala on the carry, wrapped up. Steve Paling, number 54. Yeah, that was a good stop. They needed something like that on first down. Force these guys into, and, and I don't see Catholic Central trying to go to the air or wide. They'll probably go right back up the middle again. Interesting because Cull is a southpaw. I haven't get a chance to see a lefty throw a pass much yeah. in high school this year. No, not at all. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised to see an option right here. Something Second loose. and nine. Call Duecki on the carry straight through the middle. A tackle by Matt Griglio. Nick Hudson was there to help put the finishing touch on the tackle. Brian Schwessing in there as well, number 66. Coming up on six and a half to go. Third down and five, interesting situation. Yeah, they've got that tight offense again, two tight ends. Duecki on the carry. He's not going anywhere. So now this brings up, like we said, Rob, a situation on fourth down. Does Catholic Central kick the field goal? And if they do, an eight-point lead, or do they go for it and try to kill the clock some more? Well, I don't know. I would almost think that they are in four-down territory here, but they got about four yards to go. They got to call a timeout here. <laughs> the, the clock's already started at 30 seconds. They got to call a timeout. Fourth and four from the 17. CC may be confident enough with their full house backfield and the tough guys like Duecki to get that four yards all on his own sheer power. But Catholic Central will take time out here, talk things good over. Time out. A good time out, right? Like co coached by uh, Coach Tom Mack. Comes with 5.39 to play here in the fourth quarter. What's the, the, the strategy? Like we said, some of the people think that Catholic Central's kicker is not good enough to kick a field goal from this distance. Well, it's obvious now that they're not going to go for the three points. Uh, they are. They would be what maybe a. Uh, it almost be like a 35, almost a 40-yard field goal. They got four yards to go. Which what would happen here is if they don't make it, uh, Catholic or Glenn's got a long way to go. And I guess he's going to rely on that defense a little bit. But you know, they haven't shown a lot today. So. All of a sudden, Glenn defense, what do you do? I wouldn't be surprised to see him do maybe like a little, a little option or a, a little three-drop three step back and a little hook. You, I can gear. The one thing that they're not going to do is probably go into the middle again because it would be a waste of time to waste a timeout and try to get four yards in a cloud of dust when you've got this element of the option and the throwing. So, you know, in, in a way, it's good that they, they did call a timeout. I bet you Glenn was, is probably going to defend against something going to the outsider in the air. So Coach Gordon and his 20 years of coaching experience here at John Glenn will definitely be put to the test now as far as his defensive strategy is concerned. Relying. I would just say do what you do every play. Just make sure you contain, and if you're going to tackle, make sure you can tackle. It looks like they are going to go for the field goal. This is, this is excellent for John Glenn. Aaron Rock with a 34-yard attempt. Watch the fake. They're trying to draw him offside. Rock, it's up. Oh. It's wide. No 
good. So Rock misses a 34-yard field goal like we were talking about earlier. Shaky field goal situation. John Glenn now takes over at their own 17. Yeah, he really hasn't go. kicked that good. I mean, that one extra point sounded sort of rockish thud. Um, that's an interesting call. Probably got on the sidelines, and yeah, someone might have talked them in. The, maybe the kicker talked them in. <laughs> <laughs> and nonetheless, 5.34 to play fourth quarter. John Glenn, will this be the game-winning drive? Well, we haven't seen him throw. We haven't seen really a, a good passing game yet today out of John Glenn. It's all, you know, that, except for that one long pass, which is sort of broken. We haven't really seen him crisp, and we haven't seen Reggie Spearman yet today. So, yeah, I mean, one of those two has got to start clicking here. First and ten, they spot the ball at the 20. Jared in motion from the backfield. Barrett, five-step drop. He's going deep. He's got Jared open. He makes the catch. Unbelievable. 38-yard line. John Glenn, they come out with a big play. Give Jared 42 yards. <laughs> Coach Gordon pulling one out of the playbook drop. I tell you what, that was like go down to the fire hydrant and just keep running. He just threw that ball up. I bet you he threw it as high as he did far. And uh, the receiver just ran under it. Two defenders down there and they sort of got tangled up on each other. Coach Mack for Catholic Central said, like we said before, was worried about the passing game. Barrett, when he's on, he's on. When he's not, he looks a little shaky. Yeah, but it, it, to tell you, I personally don't think he's on because both of his big plays have just been thrown up and the receiver runs under it. I agree with you. He's like tossing up a ball. The give is to Sean Hurd, number 35, and he wriggles his way across the 35 to the 34. I'm going to see where they put the knee down there. He's going to call that about three yards short of where. Oh, no, I gave him five. 35-yard line. Sean Hurd, one of the fullbacks now for the power game for John Glenn. We haven't seen much of the power game because of the fact that the running game just hasn't been there for John Glenn. 4.45 to play. <laughs> The crowd's getting into it. The pom-poms are going crazy. That's John Beecher, the tight end in motion. Back to the other side. Give Gibson maybe one. So it'll bring up an interesting third down situation. Yeah. Now third and six. It's, it's four down territory without a doubt now. I mean, you're deep enough into there, not even meaning that it's that you still have time on the clock to even punt the ball away and get it back. But in, at this part of the field, you got to break this down into you got six yards, two, three yard gains, and and that's pretty simple to do. Well, Dave Jarrett comes off number 32. An interesting point because of the fact that he's had the biggest play. He's the tallest receiver. It's third and seven. Barrett, quick drop. Near side goes for Morandi, but it's going to be way overthrown. Call. Thought he had the interception, but he went way out of bounds for this one. <laughs> so John Glenn, they went from all the way down the field inside the 35 to now. They're basically on a fourth down situation where this could be maybe their last play offensively. Well, they only have one timeout, I think, left, don't they? I believe they have one. I believe they have none. <laughs> Well, if this is the case now, Coach Gordon is definitely going to have to dig deep. That was sort of a strange call there. I mean, with the time you got and where you're at, only six yards to go and two plays to get it that you would try to. And it, like we said, their passing game just really hasn't been in sync today. I'm surprised Coach Gordon hasn't decided to throw on second down more so that if he does pick up the good yards on third down, you can leg it out those two, three yards for a first down. It's been basically the other way around. We've seen it a few times today, and, and this is one in particular. They throw on third down instead and run on second down, but and it's backfired a few times as now they have a fourth and seven, and if you're kicking a field goal, it's a 52 yard or so. It's not, uh, it's not to their advantage, definitely. They've got to either throw or maybe hope that Spearman gets a big hole enough to get the first down and pin Catholic Central deep even if they don't get the first down. Well, you hate to have to, to rely on getting six yards in one play. That's a lot. It's even a lot for pros when you had a chance to break it down like that, but now, uh, apparently they're going to go with it, and like I said, it might just be one really good, uh, they need one good play. They haven't had really one good crisp passing play yet. Yeah, well, they got three receivers to the near side. 3.51 to play. This we've said it time and again. One big play after the other. And Catholic Central now will take a timeout. Mm -hmm. Just see what they were going to do. <laughs> this is good, a little strategy here. Well, half back pass, maybe, you know what I mean? 
something I, I have the feeling we'll see something we haven't seen from John Glenn all year. Yeah. A typical type of play that maybe that's been get, collecting dust in the playbook. <laughs> yeah, right. Maybe haven't looked at that last page all flicker. year. Well, they really haven't had to. I mean, they've pretty much had their way with all the teams they've played. And they've run up against the Catholic Central team here who, A, have put a lot of pressure on that inside, on the on the line of scrimmage for, for John Glenn. The, the, the front five for Glenn have really had a hard time today dealing with it. And it's obvious and it's evident in their running game. Their running game really never was established. Every time Reggie Spearman touched the ball, he had to either elude or just slip out of a tackle. Could never get into a groove. And when and you... And love to see Reggie get into a group because then he does break those tackles in the second half and he just hasn't been anywhere and I got a feeling that that ankle is a lot worse than than, than he's leading on. Well to Reggie's disadvantage he's been the biggest magnet on the Glen offense drawing all the defenders to him practically but maybe they pull a play out of the books that they haven't seen since late August and they had to run to the tree. <laughs> yeah to the oak tree. Barron on fourth down three to Jarrett over the middle he's open Instead he goes to Hartwig, one, Morandi makes the catch! He makes the catch! Is it enough for the first down? They oh, yeah, that's the first it. down, but I'm just wondering if uh, it, it looked like the receiver tipped the ball to uh, to another receiver. It looked, like, it looked like Hartwig tipped the ball and then Morandi just ducked under to make the catch a la Franco Harris. <laughs> the immaculate con reception. Oh boy. <laughs> 3.44 to play. You've seen big plays. This, again, the biggest play of the ball game. Yeah, it's probably the, oh, definitely. Some of the John Glenn gods are smiling on him now. Coach Gordon says, ah, oh, that was pure luck and got away with that, that one. Was the, that was the play they pulled off the back page there, Mike. That's right. <laughs> Sean Hurt on the carry, wrapped up, shakes the tackle, gets across to the 22-yard line. Yeah, that Unbelievable. was all Sean Hurd right there. That's a good run. He was stout in the backfield, and somehow he got probably a couple yards out of it. Clock shows 3-10 to play coming up on. Second down and eight. Now, we've said it before. If Glenn's going to throw on second down, this has got to be the down to do it. They have to, they have to establish that short yardage situation for third down. But they have Mirandi and Hartwig as decoys to the far side, and they usually run when they have the decoys. As they do, it's Gibson. Gets through. Gets across to the 16-yard line. Brings up short yardage situation now on third down. Yeah, see, this is it. I mean, you've got two downs now to make go a yard and a half, maybe two yards. you got time. So they're using Gibson and Hurd instead of Spearman and Reggie on the sidelines. Spot the ball at the 17. Third down and two. Coming up on 220 to play. Catholic Central, they're probably going to read run. They have to. Gibson, met at the line of scrimmage, gets across to the 14. He threw the football out. He was down in the impetus of getting at the 14, maybe the 15. So Glenn's definitely got enough of the first down, but they're going to measure anyways. They've got an official timeout, so they are going to measure, which is good for Glenn. I don't think they're going to give him a first down on the mark. Comes with 2.07 to play. They'll come out to be exact. Gibson looked like he had plenty, if not more than enough. John Beecher's there. Says, yeah, we got the first down. Justin Barrett throws the <laughs> fist up. Keep the drive going. Yeah, we got to thank, we gotta thank uh, Beecher for that one. He, didn't, he waited all game to do that. <laughs> so John Beecher one of the beef guys on the offensive line for John Glenn. First and 10 at the 14. They can get another first down before the goal. Yeah, you'd like to get down there first and goal at the five. Gotta wonder if Reggie on the sidelines is wondering, hey, I gotta get in the game. Barrett flushed, throws across the middle, Hartwig slip, caught it! Touchdown, John Glenn! Touchdown, John Glenn! He caught the football on his knees in the end zone. 14 yards, comes with 152 to play. This place is going berserk. Can you believe it, Rob? He caught it on his knees. Barrett was flushed, looked to the far side, saw Hart was running across the middle in the end zone, hit him straight on the G. Yeah, 
Yeah, they got one more timeout left. I think they're going to take it. Now, the first the play was that the quarterback, Barron, had had enough in him to scramble out. I mean, in this situation, of course, you've got, you have to keep it alive. But it looked like the receiver slipped in the end zone right on the paint down there, the G of the paint, which uh, could be. And uh, had presence of mind to keep his head up, get the ball into the gut, and he kept it on there. Okay, now we've got the situation. John Glenn goes for two. Regardless if they make go for one or two, if they make it, Catholic Central can come down, kick a field goal, tie, we go to overtime. John Glenn kicks the extra point. It's a two-point game. Catholic Central only needs to go so far down the field to kick a field goal to send it and win the game. Yes. And Here? if a... Oh, excuse me, Rob. If a fluke thing happens where an interception is made on the two-pointer, the defender can run it back into the end zone, and you would credit the defense with two points. But that is a worst-case scenario should John Glenn fall into that category. Yeah. You know, it would be nice if they had that extra point because this two-point conversion would put them out of field goal range, giving a 19-14 lead or 18-14. But well, they were two take points, a 15-14 They are going for two, like we said before. An extra point would do them no good. Barrett looks. He's going to eat it. So it is a one-point game. So nothing really lost for John Glenn here because they're going to force Catholic Central to go down into field goal territory. We saw Aaron Rock, like we said before, he missed a 34-yarder. So they have to get closer than the 15-yard line for Rock to be effective. Yeah, you know, it doesn't look like that kicking game is one of their best attributes of this team. It just seemed to me that I've looked at him, uh, the kicker kicked the extra point, and it just seems sort of thuggish. This doesn't have that foot. But what you want to do is definitely, as a, on the deep, it all starts right now. On the, on the special teams, don't let them get the big return. Keep them inside that 30-yard line. I think they got a couple timeouts left. And like you said, uh, this is where a team that is a running team is almost at a disadvantage now, as Catholic Central is. That you know, of course they have seven. They're they are seven two, so they have lost two games. Can they come back? What type of comeback team are they? When you got a running type team, you got to make up a little more yards of that because when you run the ball, the clock continues to run. So with Paling's kickoff, it'll be interesting to see exactly how far he's able to kick it. He's he's gotten it down there but mostly they've had to return it from between the 10 and the 20. Yeah, I mean, after the last touchdown that Glenn had, he kicked the ball down around the five-yard line, and definitely love to see that. So maybe adrenaline for Steve Paley will give him an extra five to 10 yards on this kick. We'll have to see. Oh, he yeah. a beauty. Holy cow. It's to the goal line. Alcala steps on the line. They're going to give Catholic Central a touchback at the 20. The refs. A good call. They caught his foot on the end line. I'm, I was, wasn't sure that they would do something like that. That, yeah, that's a great. That's the best you could ask for. So that took two seconds off the clock. Now Catholic Central, they've got to go at least 65 yards to get an effective field goal range, and they've got a minute 50 to do it. You may have to say, like you were saying, Rob, if now they have to throw the football, they haven't really thrown yeah, it much they the whole game. Maybe they've maybe thrown it maybe six, seven times today, if, if, if that. They are going to put two seconds back on the clock, like they were saying, because of the fact it was a touchback. So it will be 152. The crowd with the ever popular chant of defense. First yeah, you got to get a little bend, don't break. You can give up. You can give up some yards. From the 20, Catholic Central, three receivers tipped at the line by John Beecher, number 86, and he had that first down hand out there, Rob. Yeah, see, all of a sudden now, you know, a lot of these uh, Catholic Central, they haven't had the pass block. And I'll tell you what, there's nothing better with a minute 49 to be a defensive lineman for Glenn because you just turn it loose. You just turn it loose. And you've been all game. You've been keeping your position. You've been doing what you've got to do. Now the defensive coach says, go get him. Get that, him as quick as you can. That took three seconds off the clock. Second and 10 from the 20, 149 to play. Call, back to throw. The southpaw has to flush. Ira Bargan! Sack, baby! It's sack time for 76! The spirit of 76 comes through with a tremendous block. Sacking great call behind the line of scrimmage. Timeout, Catholic Central. Yeah, that was a great play. He just turned and he was bailing out the quarterback. And if he probably could have caught that corner, he probably would have picked up some yardage and got out of bounds. But Ira 
Right on, boy, he's been doing that all season. He's been doing that all his career. He's one of the co-captains on this John Glenn team, and deservedly so. He comes up with a big play when needed. Number 76, that's Ira Bargan. Catholic Central faced with a third down and 17 from their own 12. Now you can see the coach down in that huddle right now, and he's just saying, you know, men, boys, whatever, you've got two plays. Just do what you do when you've been doing all year long for two plays, and there's no reason that we can't walk away with a win here today and head on to next week. Now one thing we have to watch from Catholic Central, if they decide to make a draw play through the middle, <laughs> yeah. Alcala, he's a terrific open field runner. Brooks, he's got the punishing skills. And Dweck, he's got the short yardage mentality. But once he gets in the open field, he's tough to tackle, especially in the secondary. Yeah, the, the key here, and what you'd like to see as a defensive coach, is not, not necessarily defend so much that you're taking people away from the line because a good runner is only good once he gets through the line and into the backfield. Okay, so if you can slow that runner up enough that, oh yeah, we can give up 10 or 15 yards, but don't give him the big play. Slow him up at the line first. Third and 17, 137 to play. Call back to pass. Through the middle, across the middle. Looks for 88. That was Dan Plankster, but he turned the wrong way. Could not get a, he got maybe a couple fingers on the football. Tight end in that play should have caught that ball. He should have had his head up. But anytime you go across the middle, you, you got to keep your head up. First to look at the defenders where they are, but second of all, the ball usually is delivered a lot quicker when you're going across the middle, especially in a situation like this. It, it's more or less a read and react situation. It's a bang bang type play. Where are the defenders and where is that exactly is the ball going to be thrown? Yeah, it's going to, you know what, it's going to come down to this. I mean, it's the final play and you've just definitely got to bend and no break. But you can't, you just cannot let anybody get behind you. Give them, even if you got to give them that first down, I mean. Catholic Central, three plays in 19 seconds. We got 133 to play. Fourth and 17. Call. Looks for the outlet receiver on the outside. Alcala makes the catch, but it's going to be well short of the first down. John Glenn will take over on downs with 126 to play. Rob, there's still time. Yeah, I think they have a couple. They might have one timeout left, but then I don't think that's enough to, uh, to, to keep the clock from going down. Catholic Central can stop the ball once. And unless John Glenn goes out of bounds, they basically got this possession down. Steve Waller's on crutches on the sidelines. Just to let some of the fans know. He favors that right ankle. Yeah, I, that may be a big question next week if he's able to go. Oh, he will. He will. He's not that bad. If he was that bad, I don't think he'd be hanging out here right now. He'd probably be in the hospital, but it's so probably a mild sprain. The winner of this game takes on the winner of Dearborn Fortson versus Clarkston. Happens November 16th. Barrett just falls on the football. Second and 10. 109 to play. And the crowd is already starting to send the Shamrocks off. Yeah, big guy. I mean, there wasn't really. There was the one. There was, the turnovers were kind of minimal. They really didn't result in any big uh, sway either way in the score. It was a hard-fought football game. It was. I think it was a pretty good game. I think I can relax a little bit on those penalties next week because those will kill you. Forty seconds takes the knee. Justin Barrett starts to celebrate, so the John Glenn Rockets pull one out from the record books. This one will go down in history as one of the greatest games in John Glenn history. 30 seconds to play. The final score will be John Glenn 15, Catholic Central 14. They'll move on, and they will host the regional final next week, which will be November 15th and 16th. They'll be here to do it, and we'll be here, Rob. Yeah, that's about it. No timeouts, and the clock's going to run. Five seconds left. The crowd counts it down. We'll count it down, too. That's the end of the football game. The John Glenn Rockets win one of the biggest games in their school's history, 15-14 over the favored Catholic Central Shamrocks. And a terrific game, Rob. We've seen all the elements come together for the Rockets this game. They fought hard. They stayed in it. They made things happen. Yeah, you know, they, just when you thought they were down, and Catholic Central definitely looked like they had the momentum going. And again, it's a Chuck Gordon coach team. They just play the basics, and they do what they got to do. But you got to take the celebration, end it, Start it all over again tomorrow. Start looking at film because it doesn't get any easier after this.
Well, the John Glenn Rockets know that they won't get any easier as the road to the Dome continues. Your final score, Westland, John Glenn 15, Catholic Central 14. Now for our entire casting crew, led by Kelly Jackson, I'm Mike Krupp along with Rob Gorsica. Thanks for watching us on LO11 Sports and Continental Cable Vision. We'll see you next week. 11 Sports.